Hello everyone and welcome to a very special feature. Um, today, myself and Harrison. Hi, Hello. Uh, Hello. We are going to be uh, talking over the newly re remastered episode 1 to 12, also known as Deep Space Adventures, the movie. So this was requested during the premiere of this video, I think, that we do a kind of live commentary over the top of this. So I would say right off the bat, if you haven't yet seen the episode 1 to 12 remaster, go and watch that first because we will be talking over a lot of the dialogue, we'll be pausing and unpausing this video, and also the video quality is just not going to be as good as it is on the on the real video because we're going to be streaming this to each other, we're doing it remotely. Um, yeah. I'm really excited for this. I, I feel like whenever we talk about um, this show, Harry, you point things out to me that I've never considered and never seen, so I'm excited I to hear your insight. Me, me too. I, I think it's one of the things where whenever I, I rewatch it, I'm like, oh my god, like we missed this thing, or like, oh, that's a really interesting bit of dialogue that like potentially has implications with it. Um, yeah, it's 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 really cool. I am really looking forward to this. It's it's always a, a really great experience to like just hang out and like watch watch like a nostalgic trip together. It's 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 a lot of fun. Exactly. Yeah. It's. I mean. 10 years of the channel, um, probably about mm. seven years of the show. Um, so yeah, yeah there's, there's stuff here that up until the point where I was editing this, I haven't seen for a long time either. So let's jump straight in and um, just say whatever comes to mind first. Uh, okay. First thing you see. Uh, first of all, okay, 90, let's try this again from the top. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Such a great. <laughs> I've told you. Everything you fed me a pile of bull, plain and simple. I think, no, uh, I think adding something to kind of frame this in in time and space felt really mm -hmm. necessary. I mean, really, the core of it was just to to get episode one to twelve up to a a level that matched the later episodes. Um, yes, but to add a little bit more for people who are familiar with the series felt like a nice little addition to really kind of place it within the timeline. Yeah, it also helps to like tie like the first 12 episodes to 13 because like 13 it feels like very separate to the mm. rest of the, the series. Uh, particularly with it just being like, oh yeah, Dom's just like floating in space and we just found him out there. Um, and like we have no explanation for it, like why, why that was the case. And I feel like this uh you know, provide some information that, uh oh, like someone's like got hold of Dom after the events of episode twelve and you know, they're they're grilling him to, you know, extract information. It's like, oh yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do bad stuff to you to get information out of you. Mm, yeah. I actually can't remember what the original um what the original plan was for why I was I was floating out in space. Dom Dom was floating out in space in episode twelve. Oh, sorry, ep episode thirteen. I mm. seem to think that maybe there was some discussion about exactly this scenario, yeah. but for whatever reason, it either didn't make the cut in the episode, or we kind of it left it at the wayside at some point. But it feels nice to finally have that brought back in. Definitely, I I think at, at one point, like when we were working on episode thirteen, we floated the idea that. Um, because obviously in episode thirteen, it's like it's Matt that uh, like gets the crew out of like that sticky situation. Hmm. Uh, I think like the implication was that oh, we were like teleported or something. Yes. Uh, oh, well, and, the yeah. idea, and like the the crew would like teleported elsewhere. But I I like to think with this that Don was basically teleported into like a max security prison facility <laughs> or something. Like he just like he ends up somewhere where he, he shouldn't be and he's like mm. immediately detained. Yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good one. I've I'd forgotten about that um that mm. detail. Cool. Let's let's continue. Heck yeah. What really I, I've told you already. I'm a traitor. Or oh, I was. I was en route to a collection job. When my ship was, was hit, hit by, by some kind of EMP, EMP blast, my main systems are down. God, that's buttery Apparently smooth, though. That's <laughs> buttery <laughs> smooth. <laughs> there was a lot of fiddling around with audio tracks to get that anywhere close. Yeah, it, it, I feel it really works. Like, it, it, it does a really great transition of, like, being like, oh, yeah, this is Dom recounting his, his experiences. Mm -hmm. It was 
surprising to me to, to see how different my voice sounds now, even when trying to do the most uh, early Deep Space Adventures voice I could. Um, mm, yeah, you don't yeah. notice it, you know, right. day to day, but hearing them, you know, really you. side by side like that was planet. quite stark. I'm alive. Mm, very I'm much, alive. very much so. Uh, is I it like a, a different mic that you're using now? Like, yeah, I, I imagine like just like differences in, in mic quality like make the world of like, the world different. I? Definitely, yeah. I mean, I over the course of the first, it's not showing up on any of my maps. Maybe six or seven episodes, I. I've pr I probably used about two or three different mics, but like yeah, the mic that I'm using now is inside. very different than that one and the kind of compression kind of and, and stuff that's on it. Uh, I mean, the mic that I had then is almost certainly better than the one I've got now. Um, yeah. I just don't have, I don't have uh, the facilities to set that one up at the moment. But actually, it's something that's on the cards. I I want to get it Waking from stasis in running as it should. Two, one. Good morning, Captain. I love that you use like the um, what is it like the Apple like text <laughs> right. sort of thing? Yeah. For, for that so it's one like section. been out for weeks. It's the uh, it's the computer on board oh, the hello. dojo. Yeah. What is that? Also, um, okay. okay, would you be able to pause just for one mm, moment? Of course, yeah. Um, you say a line there where there's implication with it when you go, oh man, I feel like I've been out for weeks. Yeah. And then you come out and like there's just like a house out here. Mm -hmm. Um. And to me, that implies either, you know, it just felt like a long time. Like, you felt like you were asleep for a while. Yeah, stasis is rough. <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> that you were asleep for weeks. And that potentially the dojo had crash-landed way before, you know, mm -hmm. before Rhea Cleaner Harrison, like, gets, like, blasted off the Andromeda and, like, crash-lands on this rock. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> oh, spo spoiler! Spoiler for, like, an eight-year-old series! <laughs> they were about to watch in a second's time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't believe you've ruined it. Um, oh, no, that's... Ruined Christmas. That, I love that interpretation so much. I, I mean, I know the reason that I said that line originally, which is... It had been weeks between recording episodes of Deep Space Adventure. <laughs> I think it was like a two-week gap between episode one and two or something like that. Um, ah. So the joke was, oh, it feels like it's been weeks because I said I would do it in the morning. But the fact, I mean, quite clearly the base wasn't here originally. Yes. Um, so yeah, the, the idea that my understanding of it being like a fairly contracted period of time could be completely wrong. Either the ship malfunctioned or, um, you know, the stasis just ran on for a lot longer than intended. And actually, mm. that explains that there'd been enough time not only for to Telify for Harrison to land, but for somebody to construct this base as well. Yeah, yeah. Because it's also like, um, fuck, I can't remember what I say at least point. Because I, I think I mentioned that. The house had always been here. Yeah, or um, at least you say it was there since you landed, I think. Yeah, which implies that, you know, if it wasn't seen like episode one or like the, the first part of this, this movie, the, the implications there are that, you know, Dom crash landed and was like in cry sleep for ages and someone else arrived, built like a shack mm -hmm. and just like disappeared. Yeah. Um, and then like, Harrison comes along later on and like moves into the uh into the house just to like survive. You know, bundles up like the remains of his like messed up escape pod mm -hmm. and like piles it into like a crate. Yeah. Which is very exciting to think about what the implications of that would be. I mean it could mm. also just be that uh my character just didn't especially do a great survey of the planet you know and, yeah, and... it's a smudge it's a smudge on, <laughs> on your on your visor exactly. <laughs> come back to get you <laughs> okay let's continue on yeah you should probably approach with the uh, caution I don't also some made looks so different yeah, like now. yeah where it is now or like when we did episode 13 versus like where it is here mm. is looks. staggering like it looks like looks a different out. game I think they redrew the art Entirely three times over, probably in the, in wow. the time that we were making this. Oh, wow, it's quite nice. The series it's got a floor with lights. Yeah, yeah. I so this thing. I was really glad for the opportunity to add uh, the music today. tracks to this early stuff because it does feel like it sort of comes so, out of nowhere later on. Um, but it's also very valuable because it covers up my mouse noises in these early episodes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I was gonna say, like, I think it's like in episode oh, one, the mouse tablet. clicks, and like the sound of mm -hmm. you like sliding your mouse Spacelog. is really like. In 127 yeah. days, uh, so the soundtrack and still really no help, signs but... of life. Will I ever get off this rock? I'm not alone. It's not just me. There must be someone else. Also, here. buttery smooth editing, okay, right? Yeah, <laughs> like getting the uh, the like, space days have to come up. Day 128. I came back to my shelter today to find that all of my supplies have been stolen. Also, by space. I sound massively different. <laughs> without those supplies, yeah, it's it's, it's amazing what a couple of years does. It, you, you don't you don't think about it, and you I'm are really right that a microphone my really makes a difference in how rash. people sound. Yeah, and I think it was like using like my old like headset mic <sighs> for that. Oh man, that was the best night. Instead, of, yeah, a cheap headset right. mic. Instead, I'm using a cheap <sighs> not headset mic instead. Oh, I'm kind of hungry, though. <laughs> um, I think any of this stuff is edible. The um, mushroom looks pretty good actually. I'm sound effects and, uh, for and like that. doors opening and closing and stuff are really really great. I'm just gonna pause a sec because I don't want to interrupt your introduction, but I just wanted to say that I started the door sounds. And didn't really consider how huge how a job it would be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of door. Also, yeah. I was I was looking around um, both the YouTube sound library and also like um, I think it's called Free Sound, which is another one that has like either um, completely free to use or like free with attribution sound effects. And I wasn't happy with any of the door sounds, so I ended up taking like. A completely free to use hydraulic press noise and a completely free to use um like barn door hitting another piece of metal and like um i think like there might even be like a steam engine or something in that sound so there's like four wow. or five layers and there's two variants there's like door opening and door closing um yeah. which i then change the pitch of depending on the size of the door <laughs> That's wild. Also, one, one thing I just noticed that like, when he came out of that door is that the dojo is now over like a massive pile of mm -hmm. lava. Like there's just like a hole over lava. It's like when did this happen? Like yeah, when yeah. did like I like, did at some point when we were recording, did we like move the ship or something? Like, I yeah. Don't, so I don't remember. Um I in episode one I fly the ship up and down to just like test if it can get off the planet, which for right. some reason I can't even remember whether I was doing it intentionally or not. It couldn't. Um, ah. and then there was a weird bug so actually this has just reminded me between I think episode 2 and th this is 3 right the yeah. they did they updated the planet generation slightly and the ship was clipping into the ground and um, I think the main dev for Star Maid at the time um, Schema I think yes. um, yeah. they went in and like did something to the save file to to save it like they actually went and took the save file and, and did some magic to to get it back because i was so scared about losing this location um yes. and not you know with the with the planet generation being the way it is i was worried that i was going to lose it um or not be able to find something that looked close enough to continue um the series mm -hmm. which is i think is part of the reason why there was such a big gap between these early episodes um, yes. And the other part would just have been laziness, but there was like technical reasons <laughs> for for the delay there. That's wild. I, cause I I actually remember like now that you mentioned like Scheme's name, I remember like there was a period of time where we did like some like live streams where we had like the community involved, mm. where we had like people come on and we had like a server that was being hosted. I think like that like Matt like hosted yeah. the server. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we all just like played Starmy together. It was really really cool. Yeah, it was. Um, it was really fun, yeah. But I I remember that like Schema came on to like join us and just like played Star Mate. It was like super super fun. Like oh, really nice, fun. a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, let's get to the let's get to the big introduction. Hang on, I've got one thing I want to mention. Go ahead. One thing about this upcoming scene. Ooh. Um, at the very start, I go like hello, <laughs> and like here's the thing: when you were like hey. Harrison, come along and like let's let's see your Star Maid thing together. I was like, okay, cool, that'd be great. Um, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do a voice. I'm just gonna like ah. do a voice the whole time. And I remember like being like, oh hello, and I was like, I I, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that so much. It's like one of the things where I was like, I said something, 
wished immediately that I could put it back in my mouth, and I've never <laughs> said it. Um, I I always just understood it as being like far away projecting my voice kind of thing. But I have noticed that you yeah. your your pronunciation is very clipped in this first um, episode. It's very kind of like um, it's yeah. very proper, like yeah, like RP, like yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, yeah. Oh, sorry. Now I was just gonna say I think that was partly because I I didn't really know what I wanted my character to be. Yeah. So obviously I made the whole like rear cleaner mm-hmm. like goof. Um, <laughs> and up until that point I was like, oh yeah, my guy's gonna be like some like officer or something. Yeah. But he turns out just to be like some dude who like like cleans the toilets or stuff like that on um on the ship so that that was basically what you you answered the question that i didn't even ask which was going to be like do you remember what degree we'd said going into this early episode like what the characterizations would be or what we would even be doing because i honestly can't remember in like i know by about episode four or five we would go into it with a loose you know here's where we want to be at the end of the episode um whereas i get the feeling with this one, it was like, let's just see what happens. Uh, yeah, I, I think like past us were like really lazy. <laughs> like, we our, our intention was like, hey, we've got like a house and a ship and like a cool looking planet. Let's just roll with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just very much like improvised, like role play and like playing the game. Yeah, and yes. it felt far more like a, a let's play than anything that was um, more structured. Definitely, there was always those sort of. Uh, light RP introductions, like a minute or two minutes, and then it was just playing the game, wasn't it? And not yeah. playing the game very well because uh, no. <laughs> none of us, like I'd played Star Made quite a bit up to this point. I think mm-hmm. we'd played it together, hadn't we? But yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, we would just kind of noodle around in it and never really, you know, yeah. get too involved in the systems or try and make the best ship ever. So there was a, there was definitely channels around this time doing really intense builds which it, yeah. we were never going to be able to do or never had the, the the real desire to do so i think telling a story quickly took over the um the gameplay part of of this yeah totally it it, it felt like very quickly we just ended up being like hey let's just do let, let's lean into the role play more mm. rather than actually playing the game but i remember like how was it like episode seven something like that that's basically just us entirely just playing the game yeah um, well, well we should discuss that when we get to it because yeah, there's course, reasons course, yeah. for that also yeah. <laughs> um, right let's keep going otherwise we'll yeah. be here all, all day yeah yeah <laughs> oh oops go, oh. Go, go ahead <laughs> i'm trying i think we, we uh I yeah give it a go yeah oh okay that was definitely a guy There was definitely a guy over there. Hello? <laughs> oh no. Did you hear that? He, he wants my blood. He wants me dead. Hey, hey, over here. I don't know what hey. I do. Um, oh, caca! Caca! I'm just a bird. He- Hello? Space bird? Hello? No. Um, what can I do? Uh, freeze! <laughs> I've got a, I've got a space gun, and I'm, I'm, I'm seriously gonna use it right now. I, I just had a thought. This is like the first I, I'm, instance I'm sorry, of us saying I, I, I space blank. Yeah. Yes, I'm just sure referring to like. Oh no, it's sorry. Come yeah. In that in just uh, like us having like the stuff in space. Sorry, mm-hmm. sorry, sorry. Do you mind being in control of the pause and unpause? Chickens, yeah. Because mine's not oh. really working oh. very well. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yes, and that became a very uh, recurring thing. <laughs> <laughs> just using the space prefix on everything to make to make it yeah. a joke. Yeah, it's spacey. I also forgot that uh, I think I was referring to the dojo as the space dojo at this point. Like even that got ah. the, the space prefix. So wow. Yeah, yeah. I I also like the idea. This just like a, a comment on like the design of the dojo and like the Andromeda later on that they have like really similar designs and. Obviously, I, I know a lot of that is from like, like your preference mm. for like ship ship design. Mm-hmm. But I like the implication that it's potentially like the same ship manufacturer who's making like all these different kinds of ships, yeah. know, from like light hauling vessels to like these big like federal like capital ship sort of things. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, you are totally 100% right that it comes from my particular sensibility when it comes to ship, ship design. But mm -hmm. I, I also like the idea, I, I, I fully buy into that idea that they could be the same manufacturer or also just there is there is a cost effic effective way to construct a ship and yeah. like both of those vessels are they have purposes and being pretty and and being sleek is not a priority um, no but the, the, the big dumb space bricks uh, are like flying <laughs> ground with like no gravity or atmosphere on them like they they don't need to be sleek and aerodynamic. They can just be big damn bricks in space. Yeah. I, I would love to see what a sort of luxury ship or a kind of um, sporty ship would look like in that universe too. Yeah, likewise, likewise. It, <laughs> it feels like um like a lake on space where you mm. design everything like design all of our ships which uh, yeah. for people who don't know that's a manufacturer in elite dangerous and uh it's also the manufacturer of the ship i use in that game yeah. so like definitely there must be uh similarities because i was drawn to it <laughs> very much so yeah um yeah i, I just thought that was interesting that like mm. they have very similar design yeah great observation yeah. Uh, do you want to resume? Oh yes. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. I That's have okay. The no, I don't know why mine's being so weird. Uh, well, I don't. Uh, even, I don't have a gun either. So. Oh, whew. I I I thought you were bandits, which are terrorizing the the sector. I forgot that I referred to them as space bandits. Mm. Yes, space yes. Pirates. Terrible we changed pretty quick to, to pirates. Yeah. Are, you, are you shipwrecked here too? Uh, kind of. Well, <laughs> I'm just lost. I haven't ship, <laughs> but I'm too stupid to find my way back. <laughs> Where I, came from. I also love the oh. idea that like I, like I come out of the house uh, every day and I'm like, oh man, why is that ship there? I am <laughs> crew member to Talify. I am from the USS Andromeda. Okay, so pause for us. Starship. Yep, I yep, was yep, indeed. Yep, yep, yep. So we were talking about this recently, and it mm -hmm. blew my mind when you confirmed to me that you just came up with Andromeda in that particular moment on the spot. Yeah. Um, I'd forgotten, again, I couldn't remember to what degree we'd prepared for this episode, and that further cemented the idea in my mind that the answer to that question was not at all. Um, yeah, <laughs> we just were just like, yeah, let's, let's just remember it. But <laughs> honestly, like, I I'm so glad that that was the name with you that you went with, and it, like, so much of the characterization of Tutalify is just cemented here and really mm. set in stone in, in a way that um, works perfectly. I'm glad that you RP'd in such a direction. Me, me too. And I felt like it, it like unintentionally just this one like dumb introduction I end up laying down like a really solid foundation for mm. where uh, the plot of this would end up going. Yeah. Um, I, I like that. I think that's that's really that's that's cool. I, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan. It's a fun way. I think that's kind of the way that I like to um, to work creatively, which is like you kind of knock around a sketch of an idea rapidly, mm. uh, kind of on the spot, and you don't think about it too much, and then you can go back in and refine that. Or as you as you build forward from that, you kind of. You, you you go okay. What is it that we actually like out of this initial thing that might be quite uh, messy? Um, and that yeah, this this came out of necessity, but it was really the perfect way to do it. I think. Yeah, it really was. I felt like it it really lends itself to when we eventually introduce uh, Sergeant Mike at mm -hmm. later point, um, having him be someone that there's already like a loosely established relationship. Yeah, um, that's really. Like that's great. I felt like it works as a really good like framework to build off when we like end up doing more stuff with with the series. Yeah, because I, I that's a really good point. Because up to that point, we have three characters that have never interacted and come from very different places. Like yes. we have Dojo Dojo, who is doing uh, a regular job and is not especially like world wise. Um, and we have Persia, who is a very unique uh, AI um, with kind of an unclear background, but has probably 
stayed on that space station for at least their current um, incarnation. And yeah. we have to Telify who is has traveled around a lot, but within a very particular worldview. Mm. To give to have Sergeant Lag come in and be the like connective tissue to that previous um, world that Tutalify had come from is um, perfect to to start to join those pieces up. I think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it yeah, it worked really really well. I I felt like it gave things a more solid grounding. Mm. Um, yeah, really good, really good. All right, let's continue on. Yes, one of the finest flagships in the navy. And and what was your rank, uh, uh, sir? <laughs> sir, I haven't been called that in a long time. I also love the idea that my like, rank Harrison has like delusions of grandeur. One <laughs> rear cleaner of the starboard side. Uh, rear cleaner. Oh, yes. I love that you're like <laughs> softly <laughs> cracking it. There's a I few times that you hear. Uh, well, at least one of us kind of break when something engine, something amuses when us. Somebody <laughs> yeah. thought it'd be funny to to lock me in the escape pod and push the button. That's that's actually something that gets <laughs> so wrecked by like okay, massively sure at a late point in, in the series when crew like, member. Do you mind pause like here? Swell guy. Oh yeah, Perhaps sure. You can, uh, um, say say that again, sir. I was just gonna say like when we started doing stuff later on in the series when we like more like. Being like, hey, we're going to go from A to B to C. Yeah. yeah. Even though it wasn't scripted, when we were just like, oh, let's just do this. Uh, I remember us like wanted to be much more careful about not cracking up. Yeah. Um, there are definitely still. I, I can think of one example we'll, we'll get to <laughs> later, which <Yep. laughs> um, is just beautiful. Yeah, I think that was so good. That's that's kind of part and parcel with the the, the thinking around the way the storytelling would happen changing. Um, and I do love how loose some aspects of it are um, early. It's also very easy for it to be loose when there's two of us, you know, and um, there's the, the stakes are so much lower in terms of not accidentally treading on each other's toes in storytelling or um, uh, accidentally talking over each other and things like that. So it, it is far more conversational. It's kind of like this, you know, we can just bounce back and forth. Um, yeah. But the story gets far more interesting once you introduce new characters, but the complexity of those interactions gets that you know greater exponentially every time you do that as well. Mm, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna hit play again. Go for it. Help me hunt down the my house. Sure. Um, what 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 was looted? Basically, just had the remnants of my crashed uh, escape pod, no. which I bundled into this house. You don't write a diary, do you? Well, you, why? Yes, I do. Yes, oh. I've been keeping a diary since ever since I crash landed <laughs> here. A grand total of a hundred and twenty-eight days. I, I do love the oh, idea okay. that like Dom like breaks into his house well, like right. I'm gonna yeah, read your okay. diary. <laughs> I find that guy. Uh, and is also look, surprised by the presence things. of a data yeah. pad too. Like, mm, oh, a data pad. Them. I better read it. Them here or something. Yeah. They're, they're what, was here, it like, like around the sort of time that I remember like. Um, things like the iPad being like look, the I new hot sh Yes, uh, but I think actually the thing that inspired it for me was that they, they'd added back. journals to Minecraft. Have, uh... Oh, that's incredible! Oh, Thank you I think that there. was the thing that I was wow, he must have been one of thinking of, like, oh, I wish there was a journal in this like there is in in, in Minecraft. Minecraft, yeah. I, I've just remembered something while, while just watching that one little bit. Oh, yeah? When we were shooting this episode, I remember being like, oh, yeah, we're going to have, like, a bit where we, like, have, like, a search around looking for things, and it's going to be like, oh, oh, yeah, like, it's going to be revealed that either, like, Dom's, like, like someone who, like, steals from people or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember, like, at the time when you'd be like, whoa, I found it. I was like, oh, okay, sure, that's that's where we go with things. But I think it's way, way funnier in retrospect. There's just, like, you just, like, dug a hole in front of, like, the rear cleaner. I'm like, oh no, look what I found here. <laughs> Very treacherous. I think I think that's a perfect example of where you can uh you know generally know where somebody is heading in in, in a in an RP in in some yeah. storytelling. 
or sometimes you can just completely like nope by accident <laughs> um completely unintentionally i think i think I, I can't exactly remember but i think i just thought the idea of my character breaking the second that any pressure was applied and being like, oh, if I found it here, was was the most amusing outcome, I think. It's so funny, yeah. It's such a great, such a great uh, process. Like, it, it, it was so <laughs> good. It lands so well. Thank you so much, oh, yeah, Mr. Uh, I'm terribly sorry, I didn't catch your name, sir. Uh, well, I'm no sir. I'm just the trader. My name's Dom. Hello there, Dom. It, it's a, it is a great pleasure to, to meet you, good sir. And I can see on your little insignia there that it says your name's Tutelify. And to oh, honest, I, I, sh I should have looked. That's just what the, what the, uh, all my various space loves call me. Most people just call me Harrison. Oh, okay. <laughs> you mentioned those people. I love that. I'm you're like, so unsure. <laughs> just like, uh, yeah, crossing. like, Harrison's totally lying. <laughs> Me How to make your own name like, sound like it's made up 101. I was rear cleaner chief to Talify Admiral while I was out there in the dark recesses of space. We came across multiple space. Surprisingly cinematic fighters. shot for this episode there with all the planets behind. Well armed, but also like those weird like slimy. disc worlds mm. that come at the most Within, inopportune times uh, like when you're cleaning the the, the lavatories, uh, the space in lavatories. Star Major time. Yeah. Sorry, were you still talking? No. <laughs> no. This is the space station in sector. I four, love four, this version of voice. Mm. The like so good. Weirdly pitched up and distorted. Four, mm. four, like when I think of when I think of this character, this is the voice that I think of. Yeah, because because I remember at the time. Like when we were making the Never show, this like so Matt would use like a uh, no, 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 no. Uh, a voice Why change, like live. We Hello. Were, yeah, when we were actually I, uh, recording. Yeah. That's a liberty Which I forget what home. the reason. Oh, actually, no. So the reason for that was because when I was capturing your audio, I only had it all on one channel. So I was like, well, it's going to be impossible to make him a robot after the fact. So that's right. He had to do it live for the time. I can see your tools. This is pretty cool. They were designed by the master I, crafting. I remember, like, when we got our the, skin. At, the at this point, when we got our skin, like, like, you were like, "Hey, I don't think we should continue doing well, uh, this suggesting? show I, I, without I having like mm -hmm. skin." I did fairly well for, for some reason. For our they characters. didn't want to hire me. Uh, I think I was just because too we weren't really yeah, flying around. Well, um, we were just like role playing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, heading off to sleep. In fact, I'm going to pause it because there, some kind of distress uh, there is. Oh, I can't pause it. Do you mind? Yeah, thank you. Are you going to pause, Tom? No. <laughs> I've been I've been denied. Um, so there is actually a Dom skin from this point onwards, mm. but only you guys really <laughs> ever see it. So from from episode, this is. Four, right? Yes, correct. From episode yeah. four onwards, right up until episode thirteen, every time the costumes change, Dom's also changes, and you never see it. Um, I I think there is one time that you do see it prior to episode thirteen, because obviously, was episode thirteen mostly being shot in like third, third person. person. Yeah. Um, we do see Dom's skin, but there is one scene where you do see. Dom skin, and that's the scene on the Andromeda, on like the CCTV cameras. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Although at that time he's in the pirate suit. Correct. Yeah. So you don't see just like Dom's regular jumpsuit. Mm. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think there might be a moment in the original cut of this episode where I like zoom the camera out and I go like, yeah. "Oh, let's show the audience what I what I'm wearing," but it's you know completely. It's it's part of that where. We break the fourth wall and we we acknowledge the fact that it's a YouTube video, um, yeah. which uh, yeah is the only other time I can think of. But there is definitely suits in between that were only for the benefit of um, the recording, you know, and and yeah. knowing who was talking and knowing who who was who when we were playing together. Yeah, which was super useful. Like, it was really really useful to be able to, uh, like just like know who each other are without using just like the, the basic yeah. skin. Yeah, yeah. And like the, the level of work that you went through, because like Dom like made all the skins. Like Dom made all the skins for um 
for the character. You did like a really, really good job. You did a good job, man. You did Thank a good you. Job. I um, I really enjoyed it, and I got so excited every time they upgraded the model. So there's like mm. three, I think three changes. There's this one. There's the. Oh no! Hang on. Did I just optionally redraw the skins at some point, or was it because of a model change? So, so what happened was, there's, there's like the bit later on where you're mm-hmm. like, oh, you got a smudge on your face, and like yeah. that was our excuse of like having like the texture. But had the model changed on that one? I don't think the models had changed at all. I, <laughs> I was just like, just oh, like... I'm going to redraw them. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> we we had these skins for for ages, and yeah, you know, it's just that like one of the things where you kind of like just did them really, really quickly. Mm, yeah, um, but then you're like, you know what? No, they need like a, a redo just to uh, make them better. Yeah, yeah. But then there is the fully kind of um, 3D with the separated helmet model that gets used in Episode 13 and yeah. onwards. Yeah, yeah. There's also the 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 weird like skin change when like they uh, added like the the nebulous gas cloud and uh, <laughs> gar- dirty gardening glove models. Those, uh-huh. were, those were really weird updates. For... Yeah, it was a weird weird period in Star Wars, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why the devs would add those. It, <laughs> seems, uh... <laughs> it seems like an unusual addition. Well, actually, uh, the reason it seems like an unusual addition was because it was Space Engineers. It's another game. Um, oh! <laughs> yeah. Easy to get these. They added the nebulous gas cloud uh, and the gardening you... glove. Uh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the um, the AI of the station is still active, so we should probably. That sounds like a good idea. Let's go. Yay! So do you have any idea where we actually are? <laughs> Every I time I was while editing this sequence, the yay kept cracking the uh, space hot directive two nine five. Yay! That's all crew members get put into hypersleep. I remember once seeing the USS Chicken on my voyages. Oh, that was one of the. Uh, on the farming vessels, uh. specializing in a new breed of genetically engineered space chickens. <laughs> I couldn't understand why you thought I was going to lay my space eggs in your stomach, but we do not have those space chickens yet. Um, it's a rather interesting. Twenty-eight feet tall. They <laughs> I love the idea <laughs> of them drive, being like engaged. Twenty-eight foot tall. Mm-hmm. Hang on, let's go pause for one I love the idea that there's like twenty-eight foot tall like mega chickens out there. Like massive, massive space chickens that lay like huge, either either huge eggs, like massive, massive eggs, or like lots and lots and lots of little teeny tiny eggs. Just, but like, but whatever eggs. size they are, the stomachs of humans are presumably a preferred location for that. Also for incubation. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder you call them interesting. <laughs> <laughs> We can just make a noise instead. <laughs> Look how fast the stars are going! This also <laughs> cracks me up every time. <laughs> it's well, such a good line. It's so dumb. I love it. Yes, also, it. the slow the reveal of like the, the space is just like fading. Yeah, it sounded so pretty, good. pretty weird though. So uh, we may have to be careful. Yeah, <laughs> might have gone rampant. <laughs> I love the design of these old. Uh, Okay, I'm Me too. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's floating away, but I'm nailed it. Fine. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> landing. So there's a sp- like a space elevator here. It's pretty high tech. Should we head up? It's really eerie. It? <gasps> I love the idea that like what? Dom's oh, just like okay, well, impressed by the bit. existence yeah. of elevators. Right, let's head up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Despite my. the space prefix again, it's Hello? presumably just op- operates in the same Hello? way as an Earth lift oh, or an Earth elevator. Yeah. But it's like, whoa, it's in space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also, oh, the idea of welcome. Matt Are being the, like uh, in a ship. Oh yes. Yes. So like, okay. And like the I've only thing that's like, like stopping a... him from like getting out is that he models. can't operate kinda... a door. Yeah. Yeah. I. Um, so I kind of envision him as like basically oh, kind of a glorified Roomba at this point. You know, like hmm. his his mobility is pretty limited, oh. and he's probably he's presumably kind of restricted to this upper level. Uh, sure, yeah, um, yeah. But for whatever reason, he was in that form when I guess the the crew of the the space station left or were killed or whatever happened to them. One moment, please. This guy's crazy. Oh. Upsets Hello? me to this day that the that he spawned the wrong side of the door there. Hello? 
say. But I think on his screen he was on. Um, the yes. Right yeah, yeah. No. No. It was not Matt's fault. It was a. Yeah, it was well, a dude, kind of um. Multiplayer it's bug. Yeah. No, it must be the yeah. voice chip in this body's different. Oh, cool. Uh, what's your name? Um, Persia. So why did you call us Is here it? again? Oh, I just need help to get a new body, and I was slightly bored on this station <laughs> only being left. Wait, so you're telling me when you said that the station was running out of power, you were lying? Uh, yes and no. Okay. We've run out of power, of power in about another 5,000 years. Um, did you just like, see that? That light just went out. <laughs> yeah. the, power's going. the sound that you did there is incredible. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is so good. Shall we head back can in you the just pause it for a second? We'll head back to the planet. I we'll certainly in, can um, do. We'll ask you some questions. I think that was a moment where you and Matt came up with two separate jokes at the same moment that work perfectly together. Because Matt's joke was, no, I lied to you. Actually, the power is going to... Well, I mean, no, he didn't. In his computer mind, it was like, oh, yeah, the power is going to run out in 5,000 years. Um, yeah, that's like really soon. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's like a blip in, in an AI's existence. Yeah. And, and your joke was that the power was going out immediately. But the, the, either, the implication there is either Matt like used his newfound powers within his robot body, body to turn off that light or for some reason you wanted to move the conversation on <laughs> and turned off the light I, either way I think, perfect i think is actually a far more mundane answer to it mm -hmm. um i know why i did it i know i know why i flicked off that light um i wasn't listening <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Like I was just like, like I was like <laughs> fully paying attention because I think I was struggling to understand like Matt's mic. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just like, oh, hang on, the power's running out. I've got to. That's uh, that's the word I heard. Power's <laughs> running out. Got to flick the light. Quick, 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 <laughs> quick, quick, quick. quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish it was something like like more of a big brain thing, but it's just like, uh... it, it, it's it's so it's exactly you know it's another one of those where it's like. Oh, I found all the the items here. It's like they it's it's a real kind of shorthand of of the information that's being uh, communicated, but it works perfectly. There's no need to dilly dally on that particular moment, and the timing always makes me laugh. Although it, it's worth thinking that based on like Matt's like dial up ass brain <laughs> that happens later on, like it's maybe not unreasonable to think like the five thousand year estimate yeah. of how long the power's gonna last is inaccurate. Totally. I, I like. I like to imagine that, like, the moment that Matt switched from being, like, in that, like, ship core to, like, being in that body, <laughs> his processing power went right the f*** <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has, he literally has to connect by a dial-up to the station to, yeah. like, remember anything. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's I like it. Because mm. we're trying yeah, to get like... home. Um, ah. Okay, let's, let's head off. So you're telling me you don't know how we're going to get home? Yeah, I have a very small data bank. Sorry. Smash well, that's, cut. Uh, yeah. that's just left here by the people who left, so... Oh. I just it's like a, a, a really Why good goof, like the... I'm trying to get so home to... So you don't know how to get it. <laughs> so good. Uh, sector. Mm -hmm. of Magnets. This guy's crazy. I don't know whether I trust him. So what were you in charge on on the space station? Um, just general maintenance. Uh-huh. Yeah, I just disabled myself and left the I can't remember whether that was a ship that Matt by. designed or if that was a, um, right, down. you know, like a default one in the game. Mm. So you, I can't remember either. I think it might have been one Matt built. Yeah, I think so. It looks no, really good. Yeah, it's, it's never given a name, I don't think. Uh, in, I was really hoping that not like the, the station not AI, like the lemon one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The highest caliber AI in the um, known to man would be able to get us home. Matt. Uh, Persia. <laughs> there was this guy I knew like, I, when I was training. I was going to force for one person. Yeah, yeah. I love the fact that in that moment, two things happen. Like, it, at least in the film cut here. Like, the fact that you're like, hey, Matt, like, accidentally referring to Matt, like, by his name rather than, like, uh -huh. Persia. Which is the, like, production reason that that happens, the real world reason that that happens. Yeah, it's like, hey, his name's Matt. Yeah. Um, and it's like, oh, whoops, whoopsie doopsie. But then Matt is just like, oh, yeah, I've always wanted to have a nickname. Like, that was so, like, perfect just, like, save. Yeah. Super fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
so yeah, I, I suppose we should say for context, um, create very creatively, both myself and Harrison chose our actual names for our character names. Uh, Matt, in a far more creative way, chose the robot to be called Persia, which is kind of clarified at some point as being a serial number, um, which, yeah. I forgot, basically. I just so instinctively went to calling him Matt. So yeah. part of the, I think, I think part of the reasoning for me and you just using our names was because it was like, oh, well, it'll be easier. We'll end up just saying the wrong thing anyway. So, yeah. um, but Matt like expertly saved it in that moment by saying, "Oh, I always wanted a nickname. Yeah, it was perfect." Yeah. So like super quick thinking. But the other thing is that in at least in the film cut, um, we cut out like building basically like the lighthouse yes. on uh the planet. So it cuts from being just like a shack to like having like this weird like candy cane <laughs> tower like, on top. Structure to it, yeah. Yeah. I um there is or there was a version of this edit where there was discussion about the construction. Um mm. but because of the fact that by episode seven we're off this planet and we don't come back, uh it felt less necessary to include in this edit. Um, and as as other, others have pointed out, um, with the framing of this being a recounting of the memories of this experience, you you don't you won't include every every detail, right? And if that's no. if that's the way that it's being retold, and that's what we're seeing these uh, this story through, and the you know the lens with which we're seeing the story through, um, yeah, why would why would Dom choose to say, oh, and then we built a tower, and um, yeah. No, that that makes sense. That makes sense. I I was always very fond of how the like me weird too. Lighthouse thing it's it's kind of weirdly um, stuck with me. Like as, as something mm. that another one of those that came out of necessity. I think we just didn't really have many bricks available, and uh, at some point the original plan was it for, for it to all be white or something, and then somebody got some extra color bricks. I don't know. I just remember there being some like mm. ah, this kind of works actually. Mm. I think you're basically right though. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just like because we were because we were like big brain players. We were like, hey, let's like not have creative mode on. <laughs> so like, yes, we had to like actually have money. So like, like three quarters of this actual like series was like just playing the game. Yeah, like yeah. trying to scrap together money. I'd forgotten, yeah, that we were playing in survival or whatever the equivalent is called in Star Made. Mm, yeah, very much so. I'm gonna hit play again. Go for it. Yeah. And he reminded me of you. I don't mind. If you want to call me Matt, if it's Persia, I've never had a nickname before. I'd like I, that. I love the fact that Matt's Matt. basically both saying, like, if it's if it's Dude, too hard I for like the production you, to call me Persia, Matt. yes, then it's got a nice yeah, range that's, that's okay. Yeah. I name my oh. ship the USS. <laughs> the little <Lenway>. like bonk <laughs> sounds <laughs> great. Because we all. Because we're <laughs> never <laughs> capable of landing the ship <laughs> correctly. Nice case in point. Also, there's a reason why the lemon wedge looks like that. Um, my plan was to just have like grey hull with like weapons and stuff stuck on the outside, um, with like a layer of yellow on the outside, so it looks like a lemon. Mm -hmm. um, but then I ran out of money. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have enough money for like yellow hull, so it's like this weird, like mishmash like ship that looks like terrible. I uh, I love the lemon wedge. Well, thank you. I love it. too. <laughs> It's such a hunk of junk, <laughs> but it's my hunk of junk. It's a hunk of junk. I think I make the castle run in, in like I don't know seven weeks. <laughs> long, long time. Less than twelve fortnights. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna play again. Go for it. Uh, my uh. sense to pick someone up. In the distant planet. People just always Probably. standing around waiting for Dom to wake I'm up always. in this series. I love the uh, idea that like Dom's travel. like narcoleptic. <laughs> He's just like yeah. constantly yeah. using the big news. That's the deepest the uh... deep space adventures lore. <laughs> hmm. One sec, let me check my memory. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the addition of dial up sounds is so up. good. Harrison over there. Why Glad people memory. picked up on it and point. during right. the premiere. Stay here. I'll, me too. Um, me too. I'll go wake Harrison up. Um, hello. We need to get up quick because there's a life form and... A life form? Okay. Who's going to place bets on what it actually is? Mm. I'm betting, knowing our luck, there's going to be some sort of 
insectoid alien monster who insists on ripping us to pieces. That description almost perfectly uh, matches Flendens, as we establish later in the series. Ooh, Flendens? Oh, Flendens, yeah! Flendens, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna try. Like, uh, oh, no. Oh, Garble, Garble. Garble. <laughs> What's this place? Matt, do you, uh, does this look like anything you've seen before? The like, yeah. design of this mining colony as well is mm. excellent. Like, well, it's so good. Just like, so like, ramshackle. Yeah. Are you still getting those life signs? Completely out of necessity. Yeah, stronger now. Oh, we're a bit of Morse code right there. Mm. We're, we're a bit of Morse code right there. I wonder huh? whether, uh, whether that could possibly mean it. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting, huh? Weird. Weird bit of Morse code. Like, that's cheese. It's it's probably nothing. I probably just accidentally dropped a, a track on there, and I didn't. Yeah. You know, I forgot to edit it out. Yeah. Weird. weird. Also, I love the fact that like we actually took this because we would when we were building this set, we were just like, oh yeah, this is, they have like a, an escape pod here. Mm. But when we came around to building the Andromeda, um, we had like the escape pod port on the top. So, yes. Like, you could blast off. I remember we had a pain, like a huge, huge pain, trying to get the escape pods to look right because they end up adding like thruster effects to like the thruster blocks. But because of the fact that they were in sideways, because the idea is that you like fire these escape mm. pods like outside, um, the thrusters were basically like going sideways relative to the the escape pod, right? Uh, and like it just looked really not mm. good. Uh, I remember we were trying to find like a workaround for that for ages, but we basically took this design that we just kind of like slapped together and we're like, yeah, let's just put those in the Andromeda. The, uh, that's an example of Deep Space Adventures being the most consistent series in the weirdest places and the most inconsistent in many, many, like far more <laughs> yeah. visible places. <laughs> yeah, this is like, oh no, no, we have to yeah. get this absolutely right. We have to get this absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but everything else is just like ah fuck it this will do <laughs> yeah loosey goosey just yeah I I, I did not appreciate the fact that you paused it on like that weird frame where you can see through the ground <laughs> I'm sorry no, I'm so okay. sorry um, let's keep poking around and see if we can find anything Shall we head down into this mine? We might be able to find some minerals another example of some perfect parking up there magical I'll see what can do Oh really? Uh, okay. Um, I really hope this works. Okay, I'm ejecting you now. Okay, I'm unlocking the door. It should be unlocked now. Oh sweet, nice work, man. I love the idea that like Matt yeah. needs help to like okay. do stuff. So. Mm. Like, Who's going really first? Funny. Yeah, because he's like he's definitely the, the most OP of the characters in this series. Like he's, as, hello, you know, a, a non-human character has a lot hey, more Polly. abilities. Hey, but the idea that he's slightly no, definitely not pirates prevented Sir? from being you know, all out the most powerful um, by his suit or by not, his you know his his body is Lager, a nice balance to that. Yes, I, I although he immediately abuses it when he yes, um, gets. Into the Andromeda meant, AI in episode 30. Uh, that's true. Rick clean on board the Andromeda. Yes. Rick I... Alify. Yes. Pause. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, in episode 3, mm -hmm. when, like, like, Harrison's introduced, he says, Oh, yeah, to Talify, this is what all my various space loves have called me over the years. Uh huh. Over the entire show, Sergeant Lag is the only person to refer to Harrison by that name. Um, Sergeant Lag X to Talify confirmed. Hey, you're you're just asking questions. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, just asking yeah. questions, bro. Just asking questions. Who, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But okay. I I back that theory. Yeah, that definitely. <laughs> family reunion, but yeah. hmm. I just realized that I'm getting massive radiation levels off this planet. How have you been alive down here? These radi oh. radiation so, levels So, do you see how insane. Sergeant Lag's character no, model has an open mind. mouth here? <laughs> Can I just yeah. pause this again? Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matt, go for it. Please go keep it. an eye. Yep. Um, so, not many people know this, I don't think, but there was a period of time in Star Maid where you could use um, a key to, you know, a button press to change, to cycle through multiple skins on your mm -hmm. character. So you would load up like 
three different materials or something to the character model, and you'd press a key to cycle through it. And the plan for a good amount of time was for us to incorporate that into the show to have it look like the characters were moving their mouths when they were talking. So every character has multiple frames, you know, like a mouth open, a mouth closed. I think some emotions as well. Um, yes. This it either got taken out or didn't work properly in, in mm. multiplayer, so it never gets used in the series. But somehow, Sergeant Legs character got stuck with the open mouth one during most of this episode um so he's just constantly like oh (laughs) but it works perfectly with the he's he's been so severely affected by the radiation on the planet (laughs) zarya my skin's very tingly also i with the whole radiation thing was that like something that we planned beforehand or was that something that we like when we land, you're like, "Hey, let's get off this planet now. Like, let's, come on, I, we gotta wrap this stuff." Yeah, up. yeah. I think I think it was one of those decisions where it was like, "We've got to keep the train moving." Um, mm. I think this is one of the longest sections, even within this edit, because it's got so much good stuff. But there is that tension constantly of like, I want to let us play around in this narrative, but I also don't want this to grind to a halt in this moment. And we don't always yeah. get that right. And I think the edit makes. That a lot less of an issue, but yeah. um, yes, some sometimes like the radiation thing, which te- ended up being a nice little through line for that character. It was born entirely out of necessity of like, we've got ten minutes or you know, twenty minutes to record this, so we got to. Because we were like just recording this like after like work or like yeah. co- or like college or, or whatever it is that we were doing. And by this point, like... with four of us getting four of us together for the periods of time that we needed to shoot these um Mm. was getting increasingly difficult and um i think we kind of touch on this in one of those behind the scenes uh videos from back in the day but even though most of these are sort of one take in in air quotes there was like times where we'd shoot basically whole episodes and then flub it or mess something up or it wouldn't be right or there'd be a technical difficulty and we'd have to just go back and record it again um, yeah oh my god yeah you're absolutely right yeah yeah, yeah there are there are long lost episodes where the stories deviate massively from where they ended up going just because wow. of the way that it that the um stories unfolded in like that very natural way really you're on. totally right i completely forgot about that that was like a detail that i completely forgotten wow yeah no you're totally right um, it'll be like but it would be something that Either we didn't pick up on it until like during editing, or uh, it would be like right afterwards. We'd be like, okay, this didn't work. We yeah. need to like redo that. Yeah. Which, for as fun as recording these was, never felt good. Like just being like, ah, we've we've run into usually technical difficulties, and it feels it feels bad to have been like, oh, I really enjoyed what we did there, and trying to recapture that is difficult, but. I think usually it's for the best. I think nearly every time it's for the best, even though it can be like, you know, it can be painful to have to go back in and do it again. Mm. I think like particularly like what is it like post episode like seven, uh, when we start being a little bit more structured, like there's like whole sections where like there'd be like some ad lib, and you know it would just like end up on the cutting room floor. Yeah. Usually because I'd say something really stupid, um, I just like kind of break character a little bit too much and I'd be like, "Yeah, we need to we need to reshoot that." Um, I, yeah, I don't think that happened very often. I think I think usually it was just that as it, yeah, as you say, it got more structured. We may accidentally say something that just didn't, you know, very blatantly didn't go against something we'd said earlier in an episode or something, yeah. um, and that was usually what we'd like try and pick up on during the shoot and there was way more stuff that it was like oh let's do some adr lines after the fact let's do a, a recording of just an audio line after the recording is complete to just make this make a bit more sense or for the mm. for, for it to communicate more than it was in the original recording mm. yeah totally totally uh go right, for it yes because i'm a sergeant yep. you know? <laughs> Are you um, sure you're not pirate? I love the fact that yeah, definitely. Sergeant like oh, keeps on saying, sure. I'm a sergeant, uh, you know. Uh-huh. And it's also I, like, I know, you're not pirate. Like, he just like kept on asking because he's like super paranoid. <laughs> he's not the man I remember. You know that I, guy. 
Yes, he was a crew member on board the Andromeda. He's not the same, though. There's something wrong about him. I don't think that insinuate is a word. It's not, as I Best remember. line in the show. Uh, yeah! <laughs> it's so Dude, good! Man, it's so good! Oh. Oh. It may have been something to do with the radiation levels thing. We'll, we'll keep Quite an eye on oh. If we can get him back... Like, it's one of those things that I always forget coming, and it down. gets me some, every time. Some, some good idea. We'll get him into the, the little mode bay. I think I, I, I think I edited out me laughing at that, that because... Really? It him. took um, away from the joke we'll in my. That we're was just, one of the times where me cracking up was uh, not about space mill and beauty. You know, it was um, detrimental to it. Yeah, I love that it just we'll, they keep rolling with it. Also, the I'm just gonna pause for one moment. Mm. The little ad libs that you do of like when we're cutting back to talking to Sergeant Lag. Uh, with you being like, oh, we're talking beauty tips, or that's why the poodle's the best <laughs> dog. Like, that's so good! That's so good! They're like, um, they're, they are Dom's understanding of things that Sergeant Lag would not be interested in talking about, so it would just not assume that they, he would possibly be talking about plans of how they would surreptitiously get him off that planet. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I I have a fondness for those those lines. So good, yeah. Well, okay. Back in our ships, we'll tell him. What's going on? We on know uh, where some sh uh, space uh, pirates uh, are, and just, we will just a conversation. Leave tell him that we need his help, as he is a high sergeant and he's the only man for the job. Any, any, anything I can do? High on radiation. Military man like him. <laughs> High Sergeant isn't a title, it's more of a description of it. Yeah, so that's how I pedicure my nails. Yes, thanks for the beauty tips. <laughs> yes, thanks well, for the beauty tips does regularly come into my mind as, as a response to somebody saying so. I'm the man for the job. It took my ship. Really? It took everything. Pirates? Yes. What ship are you referring to? The Andromeda. It's gone. You serious? Also, Loki, massive, massive, like, Person, plot point. That thing mm. was huge. How could pirates it was. take over that? Yeah, it really ties it, it. ties it together. Are you sure? Mm. I, I mean, That's also like an ad thing as well, because I remember... Here. Are you sure so, when I was saying, oh, ship what ship are you referring to? I made sure as many men could go I was trying to be like, oh, tell us about your ship. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me about this? perfect. I didn't know it happened. When did this happen? I don't know, it was... About a hundred days ago. Well, well, we'll get back home. We'll get off this hostile ass planet, and we'll... I don't want to go home. What? <laughs> we need you. We need you to fight the pirates. We can fight the it's damn the pirates. It's the only way we can oh. get back to the Andromeda. It's the only way we can take it back. Amateurs. <laughs> okay, right. Team talk up here. I love the fact that like <laughs> Sergeant like just has like um, such like barely concealed hate. Like, yeah. Everyone. <laughs> Like, all of the parties, like, fuck you. <laughs> You're all a bunch of, like, yeah. amateurs. You're making this a bloody cow. I feel so out of the loop. <laughs> also, I love the fact that Matt's you just like, oh yeah, I've yeah. got a stun function. Mine's <laughs> flagship, which I was stationed on for That becomes a recurring years, thing of, like, why didn't you let us out of the jail sooner? So, as I was hmm. saying, the poodle so, is definitely yeah, the ask. best mm -hmm. dog. You can stop the act, so... Oh. I haven't lost as much as you think I've lost. Damn. Okay. Look, I understand it's important, so I will help you. Thank you, sir. The sun rising at this point oh. is so um, good. <laughs> yeah, there's the pressure to get <laughs> off this planet as soon as possible as well. And we'll... Also, at that point, I say, we'll school! Plan <laughs> pirates. So good. What are your names? Oh, sorry, I should have introduced myself. Well, sorry, yeah. my name's Dom. I am a... Dom. Intergalactic space. Do you mind just pausing for a sir? second? Mm -hmm. I never realized before that at that point, until I edited this video, I didn't realize that when I say my name is Dom, Sergeant Lag responds with Don <laughs> with an N. <laughs> and I don't correct him. <laughs> It's so funny. That that's possibly the longest between somebody making a joke and somebody getting a joke ever. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years, because I never realized it the first time around. I didn't realize it. Or in subsequent just watches. Now. Yeah, yeah. It's wild. So good. That's and, really good. And and like very understated too. I, I love that such like 
It's like all of his deliveries are like, super dead. Now. <laughs> yeah. Like everything just like it's just dripping with just like the stain. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But because of that, whenever he, he does like a goof, it lands so well. Yeah, like perfect <laughs> like performance and perfect delivery. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have a lot of fondness for all of these characters, but I think that particular tension between him being you know presumably at some point respected within his position but having been uh frazzled to a certain degree by the radiation but also just thinking so little of us <laughs> the characters mm-hmm. the rest of the crew um is a like fantastic dynamic i think it's so great yeah um i like the fact that he also like adds like the it's basically like a, a cold head of reason. Yeah. Which, in theory, like, if we're, like, being, like, a bit tropey, being like, oh, that's what Matt does. But the fact that Sergeant Lang is just like, nope, I'm, like, colder and more emotionless than the robot is. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that, you're, you're exactly right that you would kind of end, end up having the AI take that role. But because, as an AI, he is so, um, like... I don't know, I make that joke early on that maybe he's gone rampant, like, because mm. that's the other trope of, of AI characters um, in things, but it's not even that. It's just that he he is so human in so many ways that, yeah, Sergeant Lag, the kind of now frazzled officer, is our, our touchstone for reason and sense, which is just yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, literally the person that suffered like ra- like radiation poisoning, mm. and it's like, you know, like we got like you know, really like has had his judgment fried somewhat. Yes, yeah, is still the person who's got the most mm-hmm. <laughs> the most literally level head in this shot. Yes, um, I'm gonna hit play again. Go for it. Good traitors. Well, you know what they say: just because traitor rhymes with, I mean, just because tra- <laughs> rhymes with traitor. Doesn't mean I'm a traitor. I love, yeah, anyway. I love that. <laughs> so I just oh, like walks away. Yeah. My it's actual like, serial number is Persia. I'm done with like, yeah. It's yeah. Serial bye. Number Persia. Yeah. Never met a robot without a number in its serial number. Sweet. Not a great line. Sorry for the rough landing. Seen. Yeah. This is what we call him. <laughs> oh, I feel funny. That, that <laughs> ship just so rubbing uh, against the side of the tower. A nice shaded so area here. Shouldn't my skin be tingling? I don't get it. This is weird calming sensation. Uh, that was probably the intense rays of the sun on that planet. It, it's not meant or to the be radiation. tingling. There yeah, are two uses, usages of the word intense good. rays in this series. Yeah, such a clear mind. Yeah. Hey, he's coming around. I just wanted to thank you what's, for rescuing me. What's the other oh, really? one? What are your lines in episode 13? Obviously, it was quite a bridge, Oh my god, um, yeah! Really appreciate it. Kablooey! <laughs> Kablooey! Ah, yeah, my skin's being instantly vaporized by the sun's hey, intense wait, 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 rays! Wait. Exactly. Hot chocolate. So good. Yes. yes. I remember. I remember. Where's the hot chocolate gonna be? Herbal tea, juice, milk. Hmm. I love that. Such a nice. It's like, yeah, get hot me hot chocolate. <laughs> wait, what? Oh, guys! Pause! Okay. Yes, big pause. <laughs> Do you, please do the honors. Um. Okay. So after we did the episode where we picked up Sergeant Lag, uh, we were like, "Okay, thanks very much, everyone. We'll see you all later. Like, have have a great night." And we we're just about to wrap up when like NPC ships attack us, and like the plan was, "Hey, let's just like." wrap up and like go to sleep yeah we kind of i think we may have even said well let's kind of schedule for a week from now or something we were trying to get into some sense of a regular schedule with it when yeah like we've turned off the recording software we're all about to log off and suddenly pirate or npc ships attack the planet so but, this was and it was like it was like completely unintentional it was yes. like one of the things where like they just appeared i still don't know where they came from yeah, I, you mentioned kind of like a theory rocker. that yeah, you mentioned a theory recently that makes a lot of sense. Um, and mm-hmm. I also noticed when I was going back through these episodes and recording that there are some enemy NPC ships loitering around near the shops that we travel to. Um, I think you're right that we pretend potentially kited them back from 
um, the planet which we picked Sergeant Lag up from. Yes. Um, and didn't realize, and then we left the game on for just long enough that they arrived and begun to attack us bef you know, before we all logged off. Because um, it was the case that, if I recall, we were just kind of like just sat on the planet and we, we finished recording, we were mm. just like hanging out. Yeah, making uh, plans we for the next recording maybe. And, yeah, you know, we weren't like actively, but we weren't like actively shooting. We just happened no. to be like sat in in the game mm -hmm. when we start hearing gunshots and i'm like oh matt what are you doing now yeah and like it's like oh no there's like ships everywhere mm -hmm. so we're like okay get the cameras back on like we've got to like record this right now and and that like real frantic running to the ship here is is you know partly genuine of like i don't know how long they're going to be here i don't know how uh, long the ships are going to be intact we need to just do something and we were like right up to the moment that the camera was rolling we were trying to brainstorm some idea of what we would do here and like yeah. how we would link it into the story um and i suppose we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit before we transition to i guess it would be episode nine um mm. but yeah this this has got the most heavy editing of any section of the the show very much so. I'm, I'm gonna hit play. Mm. Come on, get up! We're being attacked! Whoa! Oh. <laughs> I, I love the shots of like the lasers like smashing into the planet. Yeah. Yeah. That's so uh, <laughs> The line of like, <laughs> Sergeant Mike being like, oh, where's my hot shot? Mm -hmm. is just. Hold. Jeez. Really damaged. You're lucky you have shields. Matt, how are you doing? I'm taking heavy hits. Oh, 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 no, I think Matt's been hit. They hit my voice, Chief. We're on the fire. We're on the fire. I can see our vessels here. So good. Federation. So good. So good. Federation's actually like, uh, Matt choosing to change his choice. Uh, yeah. yeah. Really also, nice. I'm just going to pause for one moment. Mm -hmm. There's like a tiny, tiny little shot back there of me struggling to get the lemon wedge <laughs> off the pipe because it didn't have enough thrust. Yeah, we never had, had enough off. thrust for anything. <laughs> So I was just like, ah, I guess I'll just like try and like roll the ship off the planet. Also, it, <laughs> it's like, sorry, it's like, go ahead, sorry. I was just gonna say, also, it gets cut from this edit, but I mm. fly off before Sergeant Lag is in the ship, so he spends most of this conflict just like watching from the planet. <laughs> He's he was meant That's to get so into good. my ship, but I, you know, I think I'd flown off too early, or he wasn't yeah. able to figure out how to get into the guns or whatever. I mean, was we just were like, just like. Scrambling. We were just like panicking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were so panicked because this was like a genuine reaction to like what was what was happening and being completely underpowered against even this most basic AI was like, yeah, we may we may have hours of work to do here to fix this if we don't act fast and do something. Was definitely yeah. where we were, you know, the, the mindset was starting to go that way. Yeah, it was like uh, yeah, if we die, then we'll have to fly all the way back here, we'll have to get the money back together to like recreate mm. the ships and everything. It would just be such a nightmare to to you know have to deal with that if you know bad things happen because of like some NPCs attacking us. In hindsight I don't know why we didn't use like console commands to change it over to creative or the equivalent. I, I really mm. can't remember what the rationale was for keeping its uh, survival for so long. I still think at this point we were like, oh yeah, we're still just kind of doing a loose let's play at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that basically was just the case that we just like, you know, we're we're still just playing the game. Yeah. So we didn't really have a solid direction for the way in which we were going. We we're just like, oh yeah, we'll go and find the Andromeda dot 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 mm. at some point. Yeah. Um, but it's just kind of an excuse for us to like bum around on these planets. Uh. Yeah, that, that's it. Mm. Really. Yeah, the slider was starting to slide in favor of um, the more structured elements, but this was very much that last, um, last big uh, moment of uh, unplanned and still somewhat of a let's play. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Got this back. Nice, very scum. So yeah, also, it's probably worth pausing here for people who may not have gone back for a long time and watched the original series or, or have never seen the original series. This is, am I right in saying that that's footage from episode 7, Harry, is that correct? No, so this would be episode 6? 
Six. Um, yeah, six was the episode when we like fought. Yeah, fought the pirates. Yeah. Episode seven, I think, is one that we were like, hmm. Yeah, maybe. Oh no, maybe it is episode. Six. I, I actually can't remember. Sorry. I, yeah, it's it, okay. It might be e- either way, there is an entire episode that is cut from this remaster because it's basically a lot of gameplay and not much um, story. The bit that I'm sad that we've lost is the montage sequence because I I truly love that moment, um, but it just was impossible to work into this for me. You know, I couldn't figure out yeah. a, a, a way of making it make sense. Um, I... So to skip that and, and have the idea that we just get completely overrun um, and that's what leads to us getting captured made way more sense than um, whatever was originally... Um, I can't well, even well, remember what happens at the end of episode eight going into nine. If that, if it is eight to nine, or if it's seven to eight, I, I think what ends up happening is that we're like, okay, let's go. Cause we like broke down all those like crash pirate ships, um, and oh, sorry, it wasn't pirate ships. It was like federation ships. Like we we fought the we fought the pirates, but then the allied ships ended up like crashing, crashing. onto the planet mm-hmm. as well. And we've just like, walked up to them and like, turned the AI off and then just stripped the ships. Um, but then how do we end up in the jail cells in the Andromeda in that original uh, edit? Yes. Okay, um, yeah, okay, That's, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, wait, this makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a stance right here. I'm officially retconning that to this being the logical... Yeah. Re- it like, makes, yeah. yeah, rather than actually like, beating the pirates we lose it i feel like it makes far more sense like you know the ships crash the pirates capture us and take us aboard the andromeda it makes makes way more like thematic and like plot sense yeah uh that that happens i would also uh, say i'm kind of half joking when i'm saying i retcon that to make it true because I, I i i don't want to i think there will be people who want to go back and watch those original ones for as much yeah. as there is a lot of just nonsense in there. Um, I also I think there is reason to consider um, for people who are into the like the theories and the um, the lore of this series. There's reasons to consider both can be true at the same time. Mm. And, I, and I will say no more. Um, yes. There is no mm. reason to say that just because one of these things happens, the other one doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I've killed Harrison. Oh, sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Very good. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I want you to hit play in disgust. Yeah. Uh, I love this whole set. Thanks. It's great. It's just It's a nice little moment to You know how much I hate just it. Just give a little bit more context to You're away for months. Dom's there's life no way to reach you. Outside of this adventure. Of uncharted mm, middle of nowhere training yeah, but you know, he does have like no. a family to this like go home to. Mm. Um once I get back. Although I do love the idea that Dom's just like I mean Please. I'm just kinda dumb and I'm like stuck <laughs> in space. <laughs> I mean, it, no, I, I imagine bad. that it's not because he's not no concerned about the fact that he may not be able to get back. He's just mm. between the solar storms. Mm, and the he has just accepted the fact that he isn't smart enough to get back you. by himself. Yeah. And everybody that he's spoken to has been like, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just gonna pause mm. for one moment because this way Jack Pirate comes on. <sighs> um, <sighs> I remember because. Sergeant Lang, spoiler alert, Sergeant Lang voices Jeff the Pirate. Yes. Um, and I remember when we because it's, it's just like Sergeant Lang's voice, but it's just felt like, <laughs> oh, just like a bit like higher pitch. Um, <laughs> when we came to doing like episode 13, I remember we were all sat around like the recording table, <laughs> and Sergeant Lang was like, oh, who did Jeff the Pirate? And we were like, you did? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, and he's like, oh, I, I can't remember how to like do that voice. And we just like all looked at each other. It's like, what are you talking about? It's just like your voice, bro. <laughs> like, it's just like your voice. It's a bit like, oh. <laughs> but like, we all like sat around the table for like a good like two minutes, just going, 
Oh, yeah, like... because the way to do a Jeff the Pirate impression is to start whatever you're about to say with a, oh, oh I'm, just a, I'm just a pirate. Oh, oh we're the pirates, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> also, Jeff, Jeff is the most fun to do an impression of. And yeah, I, do, yeah. I'm going to, like, completely um, contradict myself, but actually I think Jeff the Pirate is my favorite character. I, I said I... yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I also really, really like Jeff the Pirate. Jeff the Pirate's one that we, I think, found so fun that he was never meant to appear after this sequence, I don't believe. No. Um, and but then the, it was just the, like, oh, he's too good, we've got to keep him, keep bringing him back. Yeah, the the idea of like this like, brow-beaten pirate who like <laughs> kind of just doesn't want to be with the crew, but inexplicably is. Yes, yeah. Uh, is very, very funny. Uh, in it, it's sad. It's really sad, but also it's it's yeah played for a goof. Yeah, uh, the fact that like no one comes to like get him out of the prison cell, and he's still in a prison cell by episode thirteen when we like whoops just like rebuilt the Andromeda, <laughs> like rebuilt the entire Andromeda mm-hmm. with like new interior. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, yeah, I was thinking recently about um, his presence on on board the ship between 12 and 13 and obviously that time has passed there and uh, Mm. you know the things that he gets involved in um and just the idea that you know at at least you and sergeant lag are on board the ship prior to the events of episode 13 but are completely unaware of the fact that he's just perfectly happy sitting in a cell somewhere in a like in a now reconfigured Andromeda, but he's just somehow gone unnoticed is is but, so fun. But the fact that Matt does know he's there, yeah, and like when ah, see, he goes, oh, you didn't ask, yes, and it's like so what, in character, what the yeah, hell? yeah, it's so good. It's in fact, so, we so are good. about to see a you never asked moment pretty shortly, aren't we? That's true. That's very true. Yeah, I'm gonna hit play. Also, Where the he's awake voice is. <laughs> Incredible. He's away. Makes a change. Also, oh. just this like MGS one, like Metal Gear Solid mm. one, like torch room is incredible. Yeah, I think I built you this guys. thing to resemble that as closely as I could. Jeff the pirate. We're the pirates, obviously. Should it? Jeff has black hair. It doesn't yeah. matter who we are. Oh, instead of blue hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's All true. that matters is that you tell me. Where you and your little You could girl never guess that we had like four voice actors for this. What? Thing. <laughs> what advice? I don't know anything about it. This is actually a very, very famous uh, of course you don't. <laughs> uh, actor we brought in to do this voice. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Wait, we got um Where am I? Brian Cranston to do the voice. <laughs> yes. Robert. Also, fact. The in like the original episode where like cause episode I'm gonna say eight. I think it might be seven, but I'm going to say eight. It was a very short one where it was just like that little prelude with like Dom and his partner, like in like that mm-hmm. house. And then it cuts to this. And like the cold cut to like the Andromeda. Yeah. And it's and, like the smash cut to being like new episode coming out in like a week or so. Mm-hmm. The hype was real. <laughs> and I was like I was like involved in the production of it. I'm I'm like, oh my god, I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps from that scene. Uh, so good. Still gets me every time. Like it's I, I'm glad it yeah. landed as as we'd hoped. Mm. It's like a totally epic, epic mm. moment. I'm gonna say something that is almost the inverse of that, and I hope this doesn't detrimental detrimentally I... uh affect the enjoyment of this sequence. <clears throat> I I get upset every time I watch this because I made a goof on the pirate skins in this sequence and oh. their stroke, you know, like their line separations is red also and they're the only characters that ever have that and I believe it might even just uh. be on their lower ha- half but nobody's ever pointed it out I'm sure people have spotted it but not thought twice but it's one of those that like Sticks out as a like a sore thumb to me. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. Now that you mentioned, that, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone listening to this is gonna go back to like episode eight or episode nine or whatever episode it is. You're gonna leave a comment and be like, "Uh, look here, right? I can see that the stroke effect on those <laughs> outfits—they're wrong." 
unsubscribed. How, how, yeah, unsubscribed, uncommented, unliked. I respect that. If that's if that's how it's gonna be, that's how it's gonna be. I uh I'll have to you know, atone for that mistake somehow. <laughs> yeah. Matt, come on, we need to get out of here. It's so cool. How do you get out? I can pack doors, remember? <laughs> you could have done it sooner. <laughs> I've been in here for weeks. You, you never asked. <laughs> so good! I love that, like, Dom's, like, super pissed mm -hmm. off. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? I've been, like, You're tortured for right. weeks. <laughs> Why didn't you get <laughs> me yeah, out? Well. And Matt is so non yeah. Oh, time. Sorry, I Never would like it. to request another pause. It was only a couple of weeks, you Yes. Yeah. This, it was only a couple of weeks, you know, mm -hmm. is another instance of the time frame in Deep Space Adventures matching the actual upload dates. So, right. So I see. it had been, I believe, a, a couple of weeks. I might be wrong on this one. I, I'm fairly certain that when time periods are mentioned in the show, they're nearly always in sync with the uploads. Um, yes. And jokes we around the time are usually around overly long durations between uploads or, you know, whatever. Um, right. And so I think it's fairly, like, canon that if there's been a long period of time between episodes, it usually indicates there is a long period of time uh, in, in, that, in, universe. in universe, so yeah, yeah, between between twelve and thirteen, for example, I think it was close to two years, right? And yeah, because uh, like because uh, Sergeant Mike makes like that line saying it's been almost two years since you went missing from the Citadel. Yeah, like yeah. that. That yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. I didn't realize that. That's I think, or maybe I did get it at the time, but yeah. Also, somebody oh. might point something out in the comments where that's completely incorrect and. Uh, I would love to know when that is. Um, if I think it's worth noting, I know we are like a large portion of the way through this this video now, but it's worth noting if we say something that is just nonsense or is incorrect, we've probably forgotten, and I'm sure there are people who remember better than us. So feel free to correct mm. us down below, or we, yeah, you know, yeah, we, we are deeply flawed individuals, <laughs> deeply. Deeply, shamefully flawed individuals uh, who have really, really bad memories. Yeah, the idea—the idea, <laughs> the idea that, that the character Dom would forget about events that happened a few years prior is disturbingly accurate to real life. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Oh crap! It's it's a bit like it's a bit of a goof that like like Dom has a bad memory. <laughs> A bit of a goof. It's perfect um, that it's now immortalized in Deep Space Adventures and in that character as well. Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> uh, I'm going to hit play. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit play. I like to pretend it's like a um, Space Guantanamo Bay experience. You're wearing the right kind of jumpsuit. Um, Matt, thank you for getting into that. How do you actually do it? There's circuitry in the door. It's true. Yeah. There is. Where's the, um, I, I just love like the. Oh, yeah, it's a circuit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How did you find a time when he wasn't here? See, uh, they get around that I'm in, in MGS1. They get around that in MGS1. Awesome. It's, it's an old lock and key. Yeah. Doesn't lock require a key card. Is he in there now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. He's yeah. going to be pissed. <laughs> oh, man, he doesn't look very happy. Oh, he's so sad. <laughs> no, I imagine not. Dude. Is he knocked out? I can't tell. I think he's sleeping. Matt, did you lay him out? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> did you really need to? He sounds so proud of himself. <laughs> yeah, that's a little, a little teeny tiny giggle afterwards. Oh, it's so I good. All the people to do it to, Matt. Oh, the, I could hear the grin on oh, my face when I was saying um, that. Disappointed. We should probably move quick because that jail boss um, comes around every couple of hours, and I don't really want to meet him. He, he seemed quite fierce. Indeed. Matt, can you get this door open? I've never heard of pirates that take too kindly <laughs> to go. military men. The chances are yeah. <laughs> that most of these people that you knew are dead, Harrison. And you, Adam, sir. Okay. Either they're dead. <laughs> 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 
It's so good. It's a, it's so stupidly good. There's an in-game ca- uh, example of a double take too. Like I turn away from him and then realize what he said and turn back to him. <laughs> Yeah, I think I also had like there was like a slow uptake of what he said before I started cracking up. So good. Uh, yeah, so good. I like like we said earlier on, like by this point we're trying really hard to like cut or like reshoot mm-hmm. like cracks. But that was just so good. Yeah. That was so but it was also like such a like a sergeant like like delivery. Like mm-hmm. it was perfect. Everything about that line was, was perfect. Exactly, yeah. So good. Welcome to Mr. Dom. Matt, what, can you bring any data up from the systems? See if we can kind of pin down... The oh, bridge well, still looks like... excellent. Like, even, mm, even at this point... I can't like, really find much, but they're travelling somewhere. Such a weird bridge. decision to go for, like, a double-layered bridge. I don't yeah, know... Mm. Down. I don't exactly know why we decided that, but I think it's quite cool Vampire. and unique. At least okay. the whole yeah, seems it's, a, it's a really, really well, good Well, it seems like they put up a fight. Yeah, I'm guessing this must have been where the last of the people teamed up for a final shootout. This right here, this is our hollow deck. <laughs> Whoa. It's certainly this is hollow. Where... Okay, you can... I'm just going to pause <laughs> for one moment you... just to like, do like a, a, a behind-the-scenes like, talk about <laughs> the Andromeda. Um, this is all like actually in the ship. Yes. Like, yeah. We, we actually built everything to fit inside the Andromeda. Um, and so that kind of makes me sad is that in terms of like what you actually see in the episodes, both like in the movie and like the original episodes, um, we actually don't see the full thing. And one mm. thing that is missing is there's a a massive, massive hangar under the Andromeda, yeah. which has like like fighters in it. It's so so cool. You never wow. you never see the hangar on on the underside. There is, I think, even maybe like an entire floor that we don't access. I know that in the revised version of the ship, there is whole sections that don't get shown. Um, yeah. I, I love the idea that we, we, I mean, we made this job so much harder on ourselves by fitting it inside the ship, but I think it was when we were still operating in the mentality of like, you know, we've talked about this before, but it was very, very structured comparative to the earlier episodes at this point, but we were mm. still treating it like Star Maid. And we were like, well, you, you build ships, don't you? And like, we weren't building sets, we were building a ship. And I think that actually was perfect for this. It did make the job a lot harder, but I, I really love mm-hmm. the fact that it's spatially um, consistent. consistent. Like it, exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a really good look. I I really liked, liked building the Andromeda, but like I didn't do a huge amount of it. It's basically just like you and Matt yeah, like, a lot doing of, like n- non-stop building. Yeah, a lot of... Um, like big sheet building from Matt as well, where um, using the advanced build tool to just fill entire sides because the thing's huge. We made we we again we made the job way harder than we needed to by making it so enormous. We could have we could have faked it, but we weren't thinking that way at the time, and it it did end up um, again giving it a unique um, character by the fact that it was uh, just a hulking thing and spatially consistent. Yeah. I I remember there was like one stream that we did at one point where we had like a public server and we had some people come aboard the Andromeda and that was like a really like magical moment of like seeing people walking around the Andromeda. I'd forgotten really, about that, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. We we literally did it like one. Mm. It was just like a really cool thing. In terms of like the, the stats of the ship for people who actually like played the game, uh, the Andromeda was a piece of shit. Like, yeah. It was a really bad ship because it was a set like but for all intents and purposes. Whilst it was a ship that could actually move around and it had like um, like the the big like tube thing on top of it is like a massive massive gun. Wish uh, it, it was actually a, a bad ship. Like it was just straight up not. Yeah. Not a good ship. No, we yeah we were again not very good at making systems, but also just not uh, bothered really. We were far more interested in making it look cool or like something you wanted than yeah making a good ship. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. What were there any sort of, like. Because I, I actually had like nothing to do with the actual design of the ship. What, what sort of things would you most like draw from with the the intro? Because I, I know obviously at a later point we do like a, a red dwarf like mm. thing. Um, yeah. Was there anything in in mind that like really inspired you with with the Andromeda? 
I I touch on it a little bit in one of the behind the scenes that I did. Um, mm -hmm. If I remember, I should link to those because I think there will be people that haven't seen them before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, definitely Red Dwarf. I, I have a fondness for that first um, season of Red Dwarf when it looks like crap. Um, yeah. And it's just like gray and flat and very utilitarian, um, which I know they kind of moved away from um, as the series progress. Yeah. Um, I, I stand by saying that seasons one and two of Red Dwarf are better than other things because it feels I, I like the, the scope mm. of the of the show. Yeah. Um and I do like the idea that it, it looks and feels like this utilitarian like mining ship. Like yeah. it, it looks that way. Yeah. And um outside of that, yeah, definitely always drawing inspiration from like the Nostromo from Alien mm. and um um I I was also thinking a lot about um like uh next generation and stuff like that uh not so much in like specific reference points but of course like the the hollow deck um yes. was very much a star trek thing um but i'm thinking about like what do they call them they like the um the you know the walkways around the the crew quarters and stuff and and how you yeah. get a lot of shots of people traveling around those were were definitely things i was also considering too yeah. um but just a big mishmash of stuff really and and things that felt um like i would want to see in a you know if, if we were treating this like a big production things that i would like to have seen in that just replicated yeah. in blogs yeah and <laughs> like just like like slapped slapped together by people with yeah, like no, like creative building experience. Uh -huh. Just being like, yeah, let's just make something that's cool. Yes. For us. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Uh, also, this little goof that you do, like, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> like the edit that you make makes it so much better. <laughs> the idea that Which the the hollow deck is responding to it yeah. and it's it is like, just producing itself. <laughs> yeah. I wish Brilliant. For a room. Filled with white and black squares. <laughs> so good. Oh man, <laughs> you're my wildest dream. <laughs> How many people were on board the Andromeda? A lot. Oh, it's a big um, ship. So many beds. We had a lot of people on crew. Um, the vast majority of the time, we'd have over a hundred, maybe two hundred people on board at any. I know. I. I know. You can. I know, Doc. You can say your piece. I have no issue with that number. That that I'm I'm totally cool with that number. You you have feelings I otherwise, have, but I, I have issue with that number. Um, that's a very very small number <laughs> for like a a big a big ship. Yeah. Um, it's I, it that I remember like people commented on the video <laughs> yeah. being like, um, what like a hundred people's a lot for like a massive capital ship? You're having a laugh, aren't you, mate? You have a laugh, Mister. Doesn't know much about ships. Um, hey, I I would say that in this universe, a lot of mm -hmm. functions can be automated. You're probably not counting robots because this is specifically in relation to the sleeping quarters, isn't it? So there'll be, you know, um, uh, AIs and and robots of varying levels of um sapience or whatever that maybe you're not including in that list i think is perfectly reasonable and okay uh, yeah i i'm i'm cool with with between 100 and 200 being the average um you know amount of on, on board. On, yeah I, i'm i'm gonna also say like uh, with like those are like the people who are like on the ship at any one time. Yeah. The crew could potentially be larger, but they're like off ship or doing other stuff, like being like well, an away team or something like that. Also, rear cleaners who telefy probably wouldn't know exact numbers. <laughs> like, no, that's true. And I'm, I'm also only the rear cleaner of the starboard side. Exactly. I, I don't even clean any other parts of the ship. We've never met any of the other cleaners from any of the other parts of the ship. They that's might true. have a better, better sense of. Of numbers, yeah. Yeah, okay. That yeah, okay, that that, that works. That <laughs> works for me. <laughs> Some on the fly justification of something that was said in passing like seven years ago. Yeah. We fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna hit play.
time. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty incredible. I mean, there's not... I don't even know how people would sleep with this many packed in here. Did you reshoot this? I can't mm. remember if you reshot this or no. if this was like the original, the original it's, shot. It's... In, in most senses, the original shot, there's that edit there that wasn't there originally. Um, I wanted to reshoot this because I've never been happy with this shot. My but king, the, I have bad news. Um, they've escaped. You know, the textures and style made us so different that it was oh, just worry. too not pronounced. Too yeah. yeah. I thought I'll just keep just it thinking. in yeah? its original um, form. What if we grab some pirate jumpsuits? Pirate jumpsuits. We could disguise ourselves as a pirate raiding party. Do you think that would work? Yeah, Sorry, definitely. Think pause about again it. for us. We get so uh -huh. much information from So I've seen a few people asking about how such a small number of pirates took over the Andromeda. Yes. And I... I mean, if I'm going to get completely real with everyone, mm -hmm. there's such a small number of pirates because there was such a small number of us recording the series. Um, yeah. But I I thought in the canon it was fairly clear that there are away parties, and yeah. they keep like a skeleton crew on on board the Andromeda because they've won. They've they they've forced everybody off the ship. All hundred, two hundred of the the crew off the ship are either dead or gone or evacuated, um, and they're out doing their stuff. They're out pillaging and they're out um, you know looting wherever they're going to. So they just. They, they don't need to keep it manned all the time. Um, but there's also like the thing of like the pirates very purposefully staying out of the way of, of like you know, the, the protagonist. Yeah. Because they're trying to get them to talk about the device. Exactly, yeah. Um, to see if like they do anything. But because they're just like a bunch of idiots, they're just like <laughs> bumbling like, around just, on this shit. Yeah. Going around like eating in canteens, just like eating the food that's been left out. Like there is um, no, there is no doubt that they would have been um, able to just immediately come in and blast us all and just yeah, yeah, just absolutely. murder everyone. But they, they believe because it makes sense if we were like functional <laughs> people that we may give them useful information about this thing that they're looking for. But we're just <laughs> so dumb that um, we we frustrate them basically, and that's it. Yeah. Um, and that's why, like later on, when like, we encounter the pirate king, they just like I, I hate you. Yes, yeah. I hate them so much. I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to kill you. That's, I'm done. I'm done. That's, <laughs> like, al that's also a recurring theme as the series goes on. People that they encounter who aren't part of the the kind of core crew just cannot <laughs> believe how powerfully stupid they are, and just immediately get so frustrated that they either resort to violence. Or in the case of the robot body, just like, I don't want to be around you anymore, even if it means putting myself in a trash compactor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good. Like, just like, I, I hate this. I hate, you guys are so collectively stupid. You guys share one brain cell. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out of here. Peace. <laughs> just like, <laughs> pranks themselves. Oh, so good. Also, just one very small thing mm. about the design of the Andromeda. Um... It's something that I don't think you see a huge amount of in, like, when we're, like, walking around. Uh, but it, all the floors are, like, color-coded. I remember, yeah. like, the brown floor was, like, hey, this was, like, with the rank of file mm -hmm. The blue floor is, like, offices. And, you know, everything was, like, uh, organized, like, floor by floor. Yeah. Um, but, like, just that one exterior shot of the Andromeda, like, sweeping by, you can, like, see in through, like, windows mm. into, like, the officer's quarters, and they look fantastic. It's genuinely a really good shot. Like, getting just, like, a little glimpse into into that part of, of the ship is fantastic. We were, we were so proud of what we'd done with the interior of the Andromeda, which is why we end up getting that kind of slightly out-of-place sequence of us just going around and taking a tour, which was, I think, I would say for Sergeant Lag, probably the first time he'd seen the interior after we'd made it so there was a little aspect of it that was like oh let's show each other this thing that we built um yeah. which doesn't make for the most entertaining programming uh i think in in retrospect but it was one of those where it was like we just kind of want to show off stuff that otherwise won't get seen um and that's, yeah. that's definitely poor planning on on my part but um 
I think we're just excited. We're just so excited to like show off this thing that we built. Yeah, yeah. Um, Also, just one thing that I really, really like from this one set is like, so obviously we got like the wall lights around the outside, but there's also like recessed lighting Mm. above us that meant to look like um. Like, like fluorescent tubes, yeah. Yeah, like fluorescent fluorescent tubes, yeah. It looks fantastic. Really, really love this set. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, I really like these, you know, quote unquote crappy parts of the ship where mm-hmm. yeah, where the crew would be and and how they contrast with like this compared to the bridge. There is you know, every, everything is fairly utilitarian, but this is like bottom of the barrel. Yeah, this is where you come in, you eat your your weird leaves and then get the out you yeah. got work to do what are they called they're called um what do we call the cereal like the gray oh, they... oh it appears uh... in episode 13 it's given a it name does. oh crap um lump space lumps. space lumps yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think you say oh lumps delicious space lumps. <laughs> <laughs> i guess like such a good a good bit at some uh... point we should uh, no promises on this, but at some point I would love to like look through some of the art assets made for episode mm. thirteen that you don't really get a chance to see in the episode because um, there's <sighs> yeah, some little just... moments in those little, those things and little hidden details that I don't know have ever been brought up on. on no, and like I felt like there's you put in so much effort with like the the background assets, uh, particularly like there's like that scene where. Uh, like Dom and Harrison like going down to the like the robotic shop, and like there's so much stuff going on there. There's so much like just little texty stuff. Like yeah, you've got like the uh, Blade Runner like poster. Oh yes, in the background. yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got the wanted posters for the crew. Yes. Um, and like no one ever mentioned it, and the uh, the robotic shop which has like the <laughs> we've got the best stolen robots in town. <laughs> Dot, 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 unless you're a cop <laughs> it's so good like everything about it is just like excellent it's so so well made um and it's one of the things that i whenever i rewatch that episode i always have a lot of fun with it uh because i spot something that i maybe hadn't spotted before. Mm, i i they're all completely unnecessary things that i just have too much fun making that mm. when you know, when we were making that set, I was like, I'm just going to pack as much in here that I can really possibly do. And I think at some point, I'd basically run out of custom block spaces because I was overriding blocks that I didn't use in the sets to put my custom textures on. I'm sure there's a smarter way of doing it, but I couldn't figure it out. So it was like, yeah, I could add one more poster, but it probably would mean that I was overwriting blocks that I'm going to use later somewhere else in the set. And it I, that was the limitation. It, it, in hindsight, it probably would have made more sense to just superimpose in the images, uh, because uh, during a lot of those scenes, we have like just a still camera, so mm. just having like just like a bright green square for mm. us to superimpose things in. But I felt like having them physically there in the space added so much to the recording experience. I also think that um, the limitations that came with working to the palette sizes and stuff were always a benefit rather than a, a, a disadvantage. Like I think if I mm. was to green screen stuff in or to um, to track elements in, I could get crazy with it. And I, I, I usually find that I end up doing something that's less good than it would have been if I'd um, kind of had to work within the limitations of the engine or the game. Yeah, with, with like the like having things be like consistent with yeah, the, the rest resolution. Of the yeah, yeah, yeah. It really worked. I, I, I very much think it worked. All right, we should keep going. I feel like we yeah. could talk forever, but uh... yeah. From the other pipe. Let's crack on. Yeah. Saying we could get so much info on what they're doing here, why they kidnapped us, what for. Surely they would recognize that we're not pirates, though. Well, my senses indicate that a lot of them just left the ship. There was loads on, but there's only a few left now. One in my cell and two on the bridge. There you go, there was loads on board. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) see, did it. Mission accomplished, gang. (laughs) Excellent idea. There you go, storage room. That's a lot of crates. True, indeed. Oh, guys! Over here, quick! Yeah? Uh, I just found a crate full of party hats. What is it? A little bit of a box full of red jumpsuits. Pirates. What do you have? I know, man. That's okay. worth like 13 mil a piece. Jeez. 
course we need them for our disguise. <laughs> Just cheeky little yeah. runescape references yeah. get me every time, guys. Great. Okay. I oh, wait. Yeah? I've had a thought, actually. It's been bugging me for freaking ages, but... You've got a really big smudge on your visor, dude. Where? I can't see anything. No, of course, exactly! You can't see anything! <laughs> you say you exactly, sir. So Look, come here. <laughs> Let me get out some of my rear cleaning the... supplies. It's gonna <laughs> clean your... not... Rear cleaning yeah. supplies, let's <laughs> go. Smith, but... Also, this is such a, like, an ingenious way of, like, updating... Right. The... Um... Carriage model. It's so weird. <laughs> like, so in, in the universe explanation for it. Everything's so... Yes. It's ugly. brilliant. Oh, it's... I love the fact that uh, Sergeant Lag now has yep. like wow. ribbons Matt, and stuff on yeah. the jail then. Uniform, really good. Um, yeah, should still be in it unless also, um, jamming my senses. Matt's character model gets further and further away from the original automation oh, wow. block that his skin was based on. Um, and becomes more and more in line with the other characters. Mm. But he also has like the Persia like, like, like a yeah. print like, on his... The hell? On, on the chest body. plate, yeah. Christ, I think they're talking over the communicator on the wall there. Um, communicator. Should we respond? <laughs> good, um, good word, good word. Um, um, ten uh, away. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, uh, yes, this is raiding party B. Pause. <laughs> what was that radio sound? Um, what was that radio sound? Because it sounded suspiciously like the radio sound from a uh, phasmophobia. Like... Oh, I never even you were you were one hundred percent right. So that sound will be from um, the YouTube sound library. That's where that radio sound comes from. But you were one hundred percent right that that's like the spirit box, or no, the push to talk sound yeah. from, like, from when there's a phasm. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, I was we just should like hang on. I never put. I never made that association. We should. We should check to make sure. We should go into Phasma at some point and check to make sure. But I Definitely. think you were a hundred percent right on that. Yeah, I was just like, hang on. I have a suspicious thing. I'm about to get my next. Nap. <laughs> is, there is a um, surprisingly small pool of um, completely free to use. Um, sound effects that you do often find overlap like there is a particular computer sound that you hear in a lot of video games that i would always come across when i was searching through sound libraries and it it sticks out to me every time you know in the same way that like the wilhelm screen sticks out when somebody yeah. first points it out to you it's that particular computer noise that always sticks out to me as, as well and i try to avoid uh, including in stuff just because i find it so distracting um yeah. but it's yeah just like, it's i like that it's like the stock like punch sound. But, like, yes. Whenever I hear that in like a movie, I'm like, mm. Mm -hmm. like it takes me out every time yeah, I hear yeah. like that very particular. That song. is such a good catch, though. I I wouldn't have. I I've worked with that that sound so much that I wouldn't have probably even made that connection. But now you mention it, you are 100 percent right. I would say with some confidence that that's the phasmo, uh, phasmophobia. Um, like the the walkie talkie is jammed sound effect. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm really pleased. That's just like, mm. yeah, I'm pretty sure like that's that's the sound. Awesome. We, we um had a slight weapons malfunction over in five six two, but um everything's perfectly alright. I love now. that you've like the internal communicator uh, to talk to like mm. the the pirate tower. I'm fine. Just get over here. You sound. Prisoners have escaped. They're still on board the ship though. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, this is totally uh, we'll the best moment. Be, <laughs> like, we'll be over to you soon. Did that actually work? <laughs> the little like <laughs> side look is <laughs> fantastic. I think we've actually got away. With Surprising them, amount of uh, uh, like don't we need to disguise ourselves first in the communication the through body language can be achieved with like the most rudimentary character models. That would have been a fatal flaw. Very much so. All right. Yeah. Right, guys, yes. Matt up. reminding us to put the yeah. pirate costumes because I think we genuinely forgot that up. we were meant to change costumes. Yes, yeah, that's what we're here. Uh, yes. I'm just going to pause for, for two points. For two points. Uh, okay, so in a second, my character, like Harrison's just going to be like, oh man, oh no, I'm going to lock myself like in the 
the my room. See, see you later. Bye. Um, do you remember why that was? I do. I, yeah. Get, do, do you want to tell tell the story? Well, I I seem to remember it being that we had a very particular amount of time to record this episode, and you were available up until a particular point. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And you had to dash. Yes. Um, but it ends. It's another one of those out of necessity. We had to act on our feet, and we end up with a thing that feels very much in line with your character. Like, yeah, it went super well. Yeah. So um, I think. In fact, were you present for this bit, or was this all ADR'd after the fact? This was all ADR'd afterwards. Okay. Um, I, I remember that you were like, "Hey, Hassan, I need you to say these lines in this exact time frame. Mm. I need you to say it like super quick. Like, let's get this." Sh- Done. Yeah, yeah. Because we were Damn. like, yeah, this is when we were like, hey, we need to get these space adventures out, like right now. Mm-hmm. We got um a little bit more lax with that, huh? A little, huh. Little, little bit more. What lax. do you mean? I think the uh, <laughs> the schedule was fairly regular. Yeah, pretty regular, pretty regular. Pretty regular. Um, um, I thought you were going to say this is the time when you see my character model, which I'd forgotten about um, until you know beginning of this commentary. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, and you get a brief look at, at Dom's face. Yeah, but not even like the full suit. Um, mm. But I think on the original point you made, I think Matt may have been juggling three characters at this point. Yeah. I think he's... He's like multi-box in the game. Yeah, yeah. And particularly, I think, in like episode 12, we have so many people yes. On, yes. on like stage at any one point in time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people are just like stationary, but you know, we have like you know the cops that fire at mm. us later on, and that's all like us like multi boxing the yeah. game yeah. to try and get things like working. Uh, the uh, one other thing, yes, just one other thing, of course. Yeah. Um, oh, the pirate king sounds a little different in this cut. Mm. Little, little, little we, different. Do we want to? I mean, and we joked about it in the premiere. Do we want to just kind of? Do we want to address the? Yeah, um, I mean, basically, like when we came to like re-listening to that after with like the original Pirate King, um, we we had someone like do the voice of the Pirate King, and they re- they did a really good job. But I felt like it was just like a thing with like either their mic quality something like that. It was just like super like muffled mm. and not uh, not super clear. It was it was a performance where they were giving their all, but perhaps some of the lines that had been given didn't really work for them. Mm. Um, and uh, I, I would say I would put the majority of the uh, lack of clarity down to the, my writing there. I don't think I gave them a particularly good set of lines. Um, no. And we this was one of those opportunities where we had options to fix things that had kind of bugged us. For a long time in in the series, and this was one of those where it was like, "Hey, we have the opportunity here to to make a change that won't be too distracting if people, you know, if people are watching um, and they haven't watched for a long time, or if they're watching the series for completely fresh." Um, but also, the change I think is subtle enough that if you weren't listening out for it, you probably wouldn't. It wouldn't yeah, jump out I, at you. No, absolutely not. Um, for for reference, uh, I. I end up revoicing the, yeah. the, the, the Pirate King. And just, uh, like, amending the script as well. Both of, you know, the performance is fantastic, but also I think the changes to the script really help that character too. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I was really pleased with how it ended up sounding. Like, it was, it sounded really good. Um, Shall we take a listen? Yeah, let's do it. A little bit more MGS flavor here with these security cameras as well. Mm. I recolor graded them too to be even greener than they were before. Ooh, cool! They know where the device be. If you go down there and kill them, then we won't know where they have it stashed. I particularly love the delivery of "kill them" because it's so close to the original. Yeah, I was trying really, really hard to like get that same sort of flow. Going. Yeah. Is this the first instance of a third-person camera in the series? It is, yeah. That is the uh, yeah, I totally agree with the exception that. of like Man, 
I'm just gonna it's like go scrolling out. Room, it's like yeah. Oh, shit. And oh no, it's we're it's totally wrong because also the montage great, sequence. Great. I'll, I'll only be a second. Oh, that's true. Lucky charm, yeah. you know? um, but like the, the way that the yeah, cameras were right. achieved was just using like a ship. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <I can't laughs> that's it. It's like, yeah, that's good. Oh, the door's jammed. I'm, I'm stuck inside through here. no fault is, of my own. Oh, <laughs> Wait, what? Terrible. Oh, wow. The door system seems. It's really funny to me that. These voice lines are like superimposed back in. Right? Mm, like they're correct, yeah. just like edited in. Um, but you guys have such perfect pauses and react so, so well to voice lines that just aren't there. Like you do such a stellar job with it. I might be wrong, but I seem to remember that I voiced your lines during this bit. So they're responding partly to what you're saying via me, I think. Right. Because we kind of had a certain amount of stuff that we knew that we needed to say. So, like, I'm probably saying, oh, no, I'm stuck inside, which then I cut out and replaced with your audio. <laughs> right, right. That makes a lot more sense. Brilliant. Which is why I think I was very strict on how long you had to, to say your lines when... Right, totally... so that makes sense. Come on, dude, what the hell? I don't know what you're also, doing. Also, rare there. shot of, like, the, the inside of my room oh, that made yes. it be nice to me. Yeah, You're scared, I love aren't you? I love the inside of your quarters. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's look, just like rusty God, walls just, and like rusty panels really on the floor yeah. and like a <laughs> yeah, a gross oh, food on. Uh, yeah, it's such an exit room. Look, Particularly after like keep in touch the throughout that entire episode, I'm big enough to be like, oh yeah, I've got like this amazing room. And it's just mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like I said, that was that jail cell, and speak to that guy. You know the uh, the old jailer guy. Oh yeah. yeah. I wonder if he's awake now. That's a point. Okay, let's head down. Uh, which way am I going? I really can never remember my way around the ship. I don't know how you guys do it. So I, uh, oh, and, um, in the playlist information for down. the behind the scenes well, episodes, I, I refer to it as being so seeing how the space so sausage is being made. And say? this may be too yeah, much about how the space the sausage is made, is but is one thing that as an editor this was, was so difficult here was it's kind of weird. trying to cut these clips together when they already had an that audio bed in. And sadly, the original working files for these episodes are long gone. They were on a hard drive that died. So I was working to the edited versions of these episodes with the audio beds already in. And a lot of the time on this latter half of the, the movie was spent matching up audio beds as close as I could. Basically, yeah. I, I feel like you did a pretty good job with it, but it, it, it definitely... Like, it, it's yeah. so, so hard to cut yeah. around. It, it determined what okay. was Jeez, cut out and what was left in to a degree, uh, um, which wasn't the case in earlier episodes. Thanks a lot, man. Yes, very much so. First appearance of blue haired Jeff. Wait. Oh, good point, yeah. What, did uh, that also have maybe... big pirate outfits? Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, totally. I'm so bad for that guy. He's been nothing but helpful to us. I still, I still can't believe none of the pirates have bothered to let him out. I think we should I like the fact that we use like, like it's, it's just like a, a weird like, thematic thing. I, I really like that we use like door oh, blocks to like represent like crates. Yeah, I, think it, I was it thinking about that. Yeah, they they worked um, work nicely. The corridor. This thing here, yeah, that's what he said. It's also not what he said. He said okay. you got to go downstairs <laughs> to get to the <laughs> it looks like an alarm the armory. Lock and load, like, guys. <laughs> okay, do you, do, do we want to pause it here? Pause. So, for those who may not know. There was a long period of time when uh, Starmaid didn't have a gun model. Um, I think there was a gun function in if you used the... So at this point we were using creative mode. And I think you could spawn a gun in, but it didn't have a model. Um, yes. And I felt weird about that not being represented on the screen when it was, for whatever reason, kind of a key part of this. Oh, I suppose, yeah, because we were going to confront the Pirate King. Um, yes. So I, yeah, I just drew an MS Paint uh, gun and superimposed it in. It's quite clear that's what happens, but it, it felt better to have this than nothing. Also, realizing that that's pretty much just the Magnum from Halo 1. <laughs> oh my god, it totally is. <laughs> <laughs> just with red dots instead of green. It, it's also very much, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's, it very clearly looks like, like the Magnum, like you're yeah. exactly right. And it's it's very much in the lineage of like Doom and those 
3D shooters with 2D sprite elements. So it doesn't feel. Yeah. It feels like it's got precedent here. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it fits thematically. Yeah, it fits thematically. It works. It it just works. <laughs> Oh, it's got two frames of animation. I've forgotten as well. Whoa, yeah, it totally does. Shows. That's amazing. You only ever see okay. it once. Uh, I just thought. I mean, we've been wait, do you not see it later on? Like, shoot at the pirate. pirate. Oh, I, no. I mean, yeah, no, pirate. no, you're right. I bet it does appear. Don't really know what we're gonna do when we get Me there. Talking do you guys have any rubbish. Um, I just wing it. Winking it. That's pretty much how I lived my entire life. That's how so, we did the entire series. Yes, yes. this is autobiographical. Well, the whole <laughs> yeah. Into a planet, yeah, it's a documentary of Paris, the making of stuff. We just pretty, wing pretty it. Good. What? Harrison's not that? here. Yeah. Cut him out. <laughs> Get him out <laughs> the show. Have him hide in, well, in his room. Like, oh, I'm a bag from the pillaging oh, so and good. the pirate yeah. things, and then we'll just go and kick their ass. <laughs> Don't think kicking their ass it's so good. Anyway, it's such a good right. Right. Matt, can plan. You yeah, the bridge? It just falls apart immediately. Yeah, it should just be down the other end of the corridor. Make sure you close the door. Looks good point. Right. <laughs> I see why you didn't cut it because, like, it's got the the old event. I spent like... so long trying to cut it's this like walking sequence, but. Bearded pig leggers, that sounds. We, we at least awesome. get to enjoy the bearded pig leggers line. I don't, I don't yeah, it's a good line. It's a pirate, it's good line. So not that. Ah, uh, I think we were raiding party B when the, when I spoke to the guy before. This is like the closest to like, like, how the original series. series. Yeah. Three, two, Sneak one. Sneak critique if you haven't seen the original. Ooh, okay, let's do this. Yeah, that's right. more in line with the, the pace thing. of things back then. Mm. Um, hey, hey guys. Whew. Raiding party here. Ahoy, me hearties. How be your raiding trip? Uh, Did you pillage many stations? Yeah, yeah, we, uh. Oh boy. Pillage so. Pause. Go ahead. I record these lines on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my, my like computer mic is like way worse than my phone mic, so it's just like, I'm going to record this on my phone because I think it sounds better. It's also and... worth mentioning, I gave you less than half a day between me being like, hey, can you record these lines to, <laughs> you really need to deliver these lines. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was pretty pleased with how they, how they yeah. ended up turning out. It worked out perfectly. So um, we now what? have... Uh, updated skins for the jail boss and the pirate king uh despite the fact i mean you know we had to do it but these are skins that never appear again because they're about to get blast i mean spoilers <laughs> they're about to get blasted out in space that's actually true because the like the the tough like the the, the bold the guy jail boss. The, the, yeah yeah the jail boss and like the pirate king both have like different actually we don't see the Pirate King prior to this too. We just no. see the, the jail boss. I think but it's a was, completely different skin. I think there was a pirate skin Pirate King skin made, but never shown on screen. Oh, I mean you're half right. Oh. You're half right. Um I don't know whether you remember this. You made there might have been like one that was for like, you know, be like a reveal of like, oh the Pirate King. Mm -hmm. And then this was like the updated one. There was oh. um Don't say anything about that because I uh -huh. think will be okay. Sure thing. Sure thing. I feel like I've already said too much. Yeah. <laughs> <This is sauce. laughs> I'm gonna hit play. Did he be? You heard nothing, chat. Yeah. You heard nothing. Uh, no, no. Look, this time we didn't. We didn't find. Um... Oh, you be tired of this game. Shall I just shoot him? Sounds good oh, to um, me. Oh. Well. Did you really think I'd be falling for this? There be cameras over this entire vessel. I've had my eye on you this whole the time. The soundtrack for the section section. Well. Well. I like this track a lot. Yeah. That you didn't bump into any of us How did you make the soundtrack? Mind. Like, I, hang on, I'm just gonna pause. Like, what no. what program did you use for it? Like, it's it's really great. So these tracks, well, thank you first of all. But these tracks were made mostly in <laughs> GarageBand for iPad which was my um, uh, kind of preferred method of making tracks at the time. Um, they were usually built there and then transferred across to um, a version of Logic Pro, which is Apple's, um, you know, uh, slightly more pro level 
music creation thing. They have GarageBand, which is kind of like a hobbyist thing, and then they have Logic, which is very similar st structurally, but you've got more functions inside it. Um, so they were usually made in, in GarageBand for iPad, then transferred across to Logic Pro to use um, the more rich instrument sets for them. Um, mm. I I really like this one. I think it was one of those where it worked out really nicely in the end, and and I think the the synthesized like choir is a is an instrument that is. I was so, going to say that's like my favorite part. Yeah. Of that track, it feels like awe inspiring. So, Fantastic. so right for that, yeah. Also, I know I've mentioned it before big MVS one energy, <laughs> yeah. A, a, a through line in most most things when I get the option to slip yeah. a kind of uh, <laughs> reference in there, or not it's even a good. reference, just it has an impact on me, so it kind of yeah. ends up subconsciously inside um, things that I create. Like, like, spoil alert for the audience. Um, we like Metal Gear Solid a lot. It's, it's yes. very good. <laughs> yeah. Original one still holds up very, very well if you haven't played it for a long time. Mmm. Totally does. Totally does. For a game of its age. Yeah. yeah I think it's, it's like a testament to just how good voice acting can really carry a yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to hit play. Do it. Uh, you mean to wear the device, be? Oh, gotcha like a face where you stand. Savvy. Uh, um, yeah, the device. Well, do you know, um, look, it's right behind you. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. I love that the Fire King turns around. <laughs> what a sucker. <laughs> what an absolute scrub. What a noob. He fell for the turnaround. <laughs> Dead stick. Yeah, we're okay. The oldest um, trick in the book. I think the pirate one got sucked out into space. You guys all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, that was a really I'm good fine. shot of like the yeah, pirate king yeah. like, flying like the out. <laughs> of the... Looks like the blast shield came down. It's, it's so time. stupid and like silly, and I love it. I wouldn't it's, have it. It's never thing. shown what happens to the jail boss, but I mean, he he should have also been sucked out in space. Um, but we we don't see him. Is the totally original, not not ripped off from Red Dwarf sequence Absolute. here? No. It's totally original, totally original. Mm -hmm. We were very, we were very brave in the creation of this. <laughs> um, yeah, love this opening section. It's so so excellent. This was when we were starting to get grand with things, and I mean, it seems it's so quaint and it's so you know, um, we're just playing around in a video game. But this felt like a big step up in in. Right, considering Matt, you, uh, what we were communicating with the visual storytelling, and to, to see the size of the Andromeda operation. felt oh, yeah. really Shop exciting. Yeah, I'll take a look now. Mm, very much so. Very cool. much so. Uh, I think this also is an episode where we did a little tiny here. bit more like dubbing with voice lines. Yes, yeah, There's quite a, a bit more. There's shops say. nearby, but there's the Citadel, and it's just a few days' travel with the main thrusters. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, start applying as a course for the Citadel. All right, let me take a look on here. Whoa, I love look at this, this guy's section. <laughs> I think there's a. I think it's a message from the Pirate King. I'm just gonna pause real quick. I'm not gonna pause it real quick. Um, there's like no one responds to what you're uh -huh. saying here, and we're just like, okay, fine, uh -huh. sure, go on, tell, tell us what you want to tell us. <laughs> I'm just so, like so done with what, what was blood you. Blood blood. Uh, wanted to show it. The Andromeda crew gave it a code. I think we, we also chronologically filmed this. Zero six seven four. Yes. Like we were like really, um, really tired by this point in, in production. Correct. I don't yeah. Know what the current location is, but I'm sure the band of nobodies has gotten a hold of it somehow. The hell, we're not nobodies. <laughs> weird. They really thought we had the device. Uh, weird. Weird. Lingering the camera on on mm. that like that. Right? <laughs> weird. Uh. <laughs> um okay i know we touched on this like super recently uh, like not like when so, we're talking uh, like to where this, should we start where's gonna have pause to... i didn't realize this was from mass effect <laughs> yeah like, not not this shot but the interior of the citadel i mean the citadel even the name itself comes from that location in mass effect but the interior um architecture is a pretty close translation 
Um, mm. Not a series I, I played the first one, but not a series I really played much of. It was, um, no. you know, this, these sets weren't built by us, so they were um, drawing. You know, we we draw from from Alien and um, Red Dwarf, and you know, uh, the inspiration for this one was very much uh, Mass Effect. Um, yes. I don't know about these exterior shots, but they always remind me of like a very sort of Chrysler building esque, aren't they? The... Yeah, I, I love how these sets look, like, particularly like the central, like the big government mm. offices. Mm -hmm. uh, looks amazing, like so, so good. Um, particularly considering like a lot of the buildings actually had interiors, particularly with the, the big government building. Yeah. Um, it's another one of those occasions where they the, the interior shots are actually inside the building, they're not separated off sets. Yeah. Uh, actually, just thinking about, I, I'm just going to hit play whilst we're, we're talking mm. about this. Um, the actual shooting of this was a nightmare. Chill yes. Chill <laughs> this we had episode so, in particular. Also we had so food. many technical I difficulties there, whilst trying to get shoot to the it. bar. Uh, particularly with like lifts, like I with elevators. Mm -hmm. We have a Federation a ship, and we're being hunted by pirates. Let's get uh, in. It was yeah, one of those things where, again, the more people we had, the more troubles we had. Space wasted. One quick so we had like six people oh, trying sweet. to do this, stuff. This is pretty happening. Um, yeah, look at with most, like, every single man. one of these people <laughs> is <laughs> an instance uh, of Starmid that we had open. Yeah. Uh, can, can you get me a split, split, uh, split for this episode? Sorry. Something that we ended up yes. fixing in episode thirteen is I. having oh, these yeah, up, uh, sort of thinking? background yeah, characters that's using that's the default skin. This. Uh, yeah, what does that some of the designs for the background characters no that appear just, in episode I, 13 were originally intended for these scenes, but it was too difficult to get them to show up on on yeah. on a multiplayer Don't instance around. at that time. Don't turn around. I hmm. swear to God, those so why only you know, the, the main the characters the have custom yeah. skins? And in fact, on the uh, other yeah, version of this here. that's I do uh, not shot this. from Koto and Sen's perspective. My character doesn't have yeah. his custom skin. Oh, crap. Yeah, it's right. Trap. Yeah, it's just like hey, one of those things where it's just like sinking. Yeah, really Is that a robot? Hey, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah. I'm not a robot. I'm an AI in a robot cell. Ah. Uh, um. Well, whatever. We need also, you for a minute. Also, the, the crunchiness yeah, of our deliveries the, uh... in this. <clears throat> Citadel episode uh, wasn't, library wasn't mainframe, super, super cool. and we need I, an I AI thought there's some really interesting set pieces in this episode, but like the, what, the original isn't that like itself really doesn't, illegal. Doesn't well. uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Just it was a tough one. It was it was a real step up in terms of the amount of interaction, and and I mm, it was also quickly come on. Um, let's, you let's might want to pause because I've got a couple of bits to say about this. But it was. It was a really fun idea, the idea of bringing these two series. So for people that hadn't seen it back in the day, um, the red character and the blue character here were from another Star Maid series that was, uh, I think more, I might be wrong in seeing, but I think more of a let's play than um, than Deep Space Adventures was at this point. Yeah. Um, and they had some similar plot points um, that had developed in their series when they um, started to include story elements. And um, we thought, hey, let's do something together and we'll try and kind of weave those two stories um, together. Mm. And it makes for a complex narrative for a viewer who doesn't know the original series, which I think is an increasing proportion of the viewership now you know most people are if somebody came to the series now um they i don't i don't even know how much of that original series is available to watch there and you know the likelihood of people watching both is quite low so yeah. with the plot points being fairly similar um but not the same thing a lot of this time is basically spent saying no these two things are not connected don't let them confuse you um, yeah. Which is confusing if you're not already confused. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those things where we were, we were just like, hey, wouldn't this be cool? And it's one of those things where mm. we'd done some crossover stuff with Kurt and Sen in like the past where we just did like some video games. Stuff. Outside we like, of Deep Space Adventures, yeah. Co correct, yeah. And we were like, oh, let's do like a crossover episode without really thinking through the ramifications of what that would include. Yeah, I, uh, I think especially because maybe when we we kind of negotiated doing a crossover, it was um, we were still figuring out what the next steps were in, in mm -hmm. Deep Space Adventures. And I would, I would kind of say for me 
trying to figure out how to th weave this story was part of the reason this ended up being the last one for a long time. Yes. It was just like, I don't think I can make this make sense. And I don't think I can make this what it ought to be. And um, I mean, I think, I think people get this all the time and it's definitely my, my biggest kind of creative regret with this is I let my fear of not being able to live up to what I wanted this to be prevent me from doing anything with it for a long time. Yeah. Um, which I, I don't think I've necessarily really spoken about on the channel. Um, I mean, the, the main factor was it was getting increasingly difficult for us all to record together and be together um, at the same time because we were at a point in our lives where we were doing, we were working more or we were, um, you know, going to university and things like that. But there was also that element of like, I, I feel like the, the, the more um, expansive this becomes, the less I am able to do something with it. Um, yeah. Which, uh, yeah, I, I feel very differently about it now, but at the time it was definitely a um, stumbling block, a kind of creative block on, on this. Mm, yeah, totally. I, I felt also like with us, almost like delivering increasingly and increasingly like grandiose sort mm, of stuff. It wasn't the, sustainable. <laughs> yeah, the, the production time between each episode was getting bigger. Like, like, uh, whereas, like, you know, episodes one through seven or whatever were, you know, just us playing the game. From there on out, it started being like, okay, we're much more rigid. You know, we've got, uh, or not more rigid. We got more structure to there, how we were doing stuff. But there was a rigidity uh, too that um, meant that we were spending longer on that pr production. And mm. um, you're right. Yeah, you kind of corrected yourself on the word rigid, but I think that's totally correct thing to to say. Um, yeah. it's it's really you know we made fun of how on the fly we were with stuff and how loosey goosey we were and how little preparation we did in the very early days but there is like that that kind of trends on a bell curve where towards the end the amount of effort the amount of time the amount of preparation that we spent on these episodes just grew and grew and grew and grew and it was almost like we were making up for the lack of effort that we put into those early ones in terms of those prep <laughs> preparation because i i love those early ones and that's part of the reason why i wanted to do this remaster but mm. the the latter half of the series is much more reflective of the kind of time and consideration and and post-production that went into the, the later things you know the the 13 onwards yeah, and I felt like particularly with... Because uh, I remember, like, after episode 13, we ended up being like, okay, we maybe need to remodel the Andromeda. Mm -hmm. like, we were like, okay, let's let's start remodeling it. I remember we got, like, halfway through it, and we were just like, I, this is soul-crushing. Like, it's yeah. like, we didn't know... We didn't really have a plan for what we mm -hmm. were doing. Yeah, we, we left ourselves in such... We wrote ourselves into such a hard corner Yeah, uh, with how this episode ends. Which, um, which given given time it's quite clear that there was lots that we could do but i think when you're feeling the you know you're running on the treadmill when you're feeling the the kind of the uh the heat of like we've got to keep making stuff and we can't figure out what it is that we want to do with this you get tunnel vision and you 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 can't see what actually is quite an obvious uh, route out of a uh a story writing problem um, yeah absolutely yeah. All right, we should uh, continue. Yeah, that was a good little chat there. <laughs> yeah, very much. So. <laughs> Please. Well, whoa, whoa, I mean, whoa, this whoa. is illegal. <laughs> um, so this is I love the beast. Of this room, Reckon you can get yes, so, me too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is quite simple. Give me a second. Okay. Oh, thank God. Sweet. Freaking side door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still love that Scan. side door. I, like, yeah, that's I one of those comments that I think about outside of. Granted. Deep Space well, Adventures quite Citadel often. Public library. Yeah, like can I help like you today? Um, we need to know more also, about the device Sam that we collected from the pirate Sam did a really good choice of playing. Uh, really good choice, oh my god. Really good job of voicing you, the... You met the pirate uh, Yeah, yeah, the we killed AI yeah. stuff mm. around no, the... No, 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 you didn't. We, library we voice is mainly the central mainframe. I am actually the central mainframe. I'm pretty Wait, sure really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Um, Can I suggest I, two I, Regardless, I will begin to scan my I wanted to scanning. 
differentiate the two um, computers, the idea that there's two different AIs uh, running the two different mainframes. Um, but they both run yeah, yeah, through the same a, kind of filter. So I ran them through yeah, right. uh, yeah, basically the a kind of looser form of what they do with GLaDOS's voice, which is it's human speech, but it's got a kind of um, almost like an auto-tune locking it to a certain key. Mm -hmm. um, so we're both run through the same filter, but yeah, it's my my voice on the other one. But he, he did a great job here. This is such a good yeah. delivery. He, he also voiced okay, the Citadel. Correct, yeah. The federal police, sure I think. Yeah, the federation police. Not a good idea. Look, Look honestly, I, we're on a mission here. Oh. It does a good job, though. It does a really good job. Mm. Oh my god, dude. Oh, oh, oh my god. Okay, wait. What's it? Really oh, minor thing. I love the fact that Matt shoots back. <laughs> like, he's shoots oh back at, at the cop. Quickly, this way. So wild. Okay, like, he's the only back. person that does it as well. Like, he's the only person like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to shoot back. Yeah. Look, there's elevators. Blocks out. Oh, so quickly, these go, go, go. shots were a right. nightmare. Oh, to get, right? Yes, yeah. There were so I'm many really people connected to, though, or so because, many clients yeah. connected to Let's see what the happens. game. Yep. Uh, it was just so laggy. Yeah. Also, the right. cut there, because we have two elevator super... sections and they're both a nightmare. Okay, good. Interface. An authorized oh, access protocol totally totally Authentication well. system override. Welcome to the federal database. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hurry it up. We need to know more about this. I'm not sure what this is. Yeah, it's anything that you would like to scan. <laughs> I can't must believe I didn't do this. Well, you see, <laughs> even I'm learning this stuff tonight. Scanning device seven eight three six two. Boy, his brain looks incredible. So dumb. Do yeah, I love the stem King's that lock? goes up into the spire. Yeah, he, mentioned, he mentioned the device was zero six seven four eight. Maybe this is another one of the devices. Scanning for device 06748. Also, device is just such like a mug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's just like, <laughs> so, hey, it's like a thing that we weren't entirely sure what we were wait, doing. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. The Andromeda we'll was keep looking that for this in the background. <laughs> have whoa, that uh, multi-spell cam. <laughs> <laughs> I think they broke through, guys. We uh, don't have much time. The They're in the building. Wait. There's no escapes up here. Well, the master's like, oh, hey, by the way, you're gonna die. That's, that's a terrible, terrible yeah, he's not idea. Too about it. Koto, Koto, this yeah. way's better. Okay, okay. All right, let's rock. Oh, we hope the building surrounded. Leave now with your hands up. Just pretend so, you're a uh, Duke Nukem. Oh my Zen. god. Zen, I'm gonna push you. Oh, I've oh, never oh, known oh, what oh. you say there, by the way. Do oh, you remember? Uh, no, I, I don't. It, to be honest, the production for I know that isn't what the production for that entire episode is such a blur for mm. me. I basically have no recollection <laughs> of what we actually did. Yeah, um, fair. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just one uh, me harping on about Metal Gear Solid again. This is like so much like the first person shot when you're in the torture room, like with like the lights. Shining yeah. in, in your face while everyone's talking to you. Also, so, the am I right in seeing the second instance of my character being captured? Yeah, being being captured and presumably tortured, interrogated, you being interrogated by you. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, there's with that, that's with there's another something... member of the. Sorry, go go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say there's something Freudian there to, to unpick. I'm sure. <laughs> But it's also like having another member of like the main crew assisting yes. you in torturing yeah, yeah. itself. Uh, very true. Yes. I and mean, also this whole thing of being like, uh, I'm just gonna play it. The the whole thing of the being truth. like, it would be too you much paperwork to kill you, so I'm, I'm just gonna like abandon you in this freezing expensive space. It feels nice really to really um, give a little insight into perhaps how. The Federation works and how they feel about things like this. You know, the crew being just this tiny little inconvenience, basically, in a massive, massive um, machine. But you've run out of road. Officer, hit him with a man flash. Primus suit for stasis. Yes, sir. Please don't kill me. Kill you? Do you have any idea how much paperwork I'd have to file if I killed you? No. <laughs> I'm just going to let you drift out there. Forever. So good. So just ah, chef's kiss. So <laughs> such excellent delivery.
Is this a new track, by the way? Yes, this this is only in episode 15, 15 and this one. Yeah. Okay, cool. It felt necessary to have a new... I'll, I'll talk after this. I'm just going to pause for one moment. Is that more Morse code in the background? I can't hmm. uh, tell. I don't know. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 weird. Oh, weird. Huh. oh, I'm Morse the code. <laughs> oh, 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 weird. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to go get a shot ready to go pick him up. Nice. Also, the game looks so different. Yeah. I, I really like the direction. Um, Mm, well there we go nice yeah i mean i think we've probably got a few thoughts to wrap it up i was i was about to yeah. say um uh no what was i about to say oh mm -hmm. yes okay so that new track it felt kind of necessary to introduce a new um musical piece to reflect some of the um more somber tone of some of the elements in like episode 15 and then this concluding shot um uh maybe somber isn't exactly the right term but you know just that little tinge of darkness in, in yeah reflective yeah 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 that's a nice way of putting it i think i think the track the working title for the track was just credit song but um mm -hmm. now i think it yeah reflective is a really nice way of describing its use mm -hmm. um yeah, so that's that. Uh, any closing thoughts, Harry? Um, yeah, I so for for a really long time, I've had people because I, I I mentioned these space adventures like a a lot to people when I was like, hey, this is like thing that I worked on that was like a lot of fun. But whenever people are like, oh, hey, can you drop me a link to it? I'm like, mm, mm. I I kind of don't yeah. want to because like the I think the earlier episodes just kind of don't flow super well and it might be like a little bit boring for people who maybe don't have a huge amount of time on their hands because like what, what was like the original runtime like yeah the original runtime of episodes 1 through 12 like what was like the total runtime uh i can't remember off the top of my head i think it could be coming up to six hours so it's a oh, big commitment crap. yeah it's 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 a lot to ask of people like oh hey this show gets you know it's that classic thing of like this show gets good um X number of hours into it, and and yeah. whether or not that's a reasonable thing to ask of people, and that's not to say that those early ones don't have great moments. And I'm not, very, I am. It's not to say I'm not very nostalgic um, of mm. those, but the idea of somebody fresh coming to this um, and and say go back to episode one, which is essentially a let's play of a of a game that uh, you know at least at the moment is not even in development currently, um, or yeah. you know pu publicly so. Um, it is a real ask. Uh, so, yeah, I'm glad that, that there can be a, a version of this that is a little bit more manageable, it's a little bit easier to digest, um, and it might be a little bit more... Yeah, I'm glad that you're finally able to to point people in the direction of this thing that, um, you know, I, I had a lot of fun making, and I, I know it was mm. uh, something that I am... I am proud of us working on together. It's nice to have a project that uh, a group of friends have worked on and that has spanned such a long period of time. Likewise, yeah. And I'm also really like pleased with like how the direction of the show has taken like with with like as I like, doing like new work on it recently. That's yeah. been a lot of fun. Uh, episode fifteen. I I <laughs> love episode fifteen. <laughs> it's so good. Um, it, it takes my boxes for like wanting something a bit creepy yeah um but but for context for me like my partner had never seen these mm. adventures and they were asking about it and i was like i mean i mean you can mm. watch it if you want but it's not great um but with the movie coming out they were like okay i'm, I'm gonna watch it and they actually turned up for the premiere yeah and, like, it was really premiere. nice yeah yeah um i yeah yeah, I'm so I'm so glad that 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 really is the reason that I finally sat down and did this because mm -hmm. it was a big undertaking. Um, I mean, I enjoyed it, 
it was uh, I have a particular kind of love-hate relationship with editing projects where it's like there is a real uh, delayed gratification thing with it and I, I do find it laborious but I mm. generally like the process of taking something and constructing you know taking existing footage and constructing something new narratively out of it is really enjoyable um, so yeah to, to for you to then be able to point people in the direction of this is exactly the reason that I, I went through that and yeah. um, uh, like like, like from a purely selfish perspective, it was just like this is incredible for me because it's just at that point in time where, uh, yeah, I'm I'm talking about yeah the series a lot recently with you know episode fourteen fifteen coming out. Yeah, you know, it was one of those things where I was like, oh my god, I'm like super enthused and hyped about this thing. Mm. So I've been talking about it a lot. So I've had a lot of people asking about it. So be able to point people in the direction of the movie and say, hey, if you want like the backstory, watch this, and it's like uh, an edited version of that. Yeah, it's yeah, brilliant. Exactly. Um. So we should probably wrap up. This has been multiple hours long. I mean, it's been yeah. a huge amount of fun. I'm I'm really it, grateful for you um, taking the time out to talk through this because I think it's one of those things where we we have little scattershot talks about these, but it's, to to kind of um, specifically sit down and do this is something that uh, would probably not happen unless it was requested. Um, mm. And I would just kind of finish up by saying. Anybody that's made it through to this point in the video, congratulations. That was probably yeah. a, a monstrous session. And also, um, we'll see you in seven years for the director's commentary of episode 14 and 15. But um, I would totally do an episode 13. I think there's been enough time mm. between then and, and now that I would happily talk about 13. I'd, uh, I'd love to talk about episode 13. I feel like the production for, for episode 13 was really really interesting uh i'd love to talk about that that would be a, a lot of fun yeah actually. we'll do that at some point um yeah. and we can maybe have a look at some of the art assets as well uh, mm. yeah but we've got we've got things to you know we've got things to continue to delve into and investigate about episodes 14 and 15 onwards um so no I, no no commentary on that for for a good period of time i think yes absolutely absolutely it's it's there's there's ongoing stuff and mm. there's people out there who are trying to decode things and you know we really appreciate yeah. your efforts like it's, it's been really um gratifying to see that yes and so, there and there are people that work behind the scenes on this um this series who are you know, very close to the series and good friends of ours who um, mm. uh, put a lot of time and effort into thinking about those things. And I know that uh, seeing what people come up with is a treat for all of us. Um, mm -hmm. It's really a, a, another reason to make these is to see where people's interpretations of those stories take, uh, take them. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Cool. And on that note, we should probably wrap it up. Uh, yeah. That, that's that's a great idea that yeah. that was that was really great mm. um th thanks to every, everyone who like tuned in for this and made it all the way through that was you know super great i hope that you enjoyed it yeah hopefully it's been enlightening in some some aspect along the way and we didn't make too many blobs on things that you probably know better than those <laughs> um yeah yeah just like um actually exactly they never have this pirate suit out uh, uh, outline through the whole thing mm. If you see for like two frames, it's actually there. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> if if anyone does have uh, further thoughts on the the truly series destroying pirate outline incident, uh, please post them below. Hashtag suitgate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Yeah. Cool. Have uh, a good rest of the evening, Harry, and uh, yeah, you whatever, too, man. You whatever too. time of the day it is, people that are viewing this. Um, we'll see you shortly. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.